Right, this video is called uh, Beware of the Leaven. Uh, it's about statecraft, the corruption in uh, the nation's governments within the law, within the lawful op apparatus and the law that e each na nation swears o oaths uh, by the law to keep. And uh, so I'm going to clearly show by evidence, by lawful witness, by scripture, by uh, testimony, by the word of God, the, the the written word, the lawful written word to show with lawful points and evidence, the, the, the lawful points in evidence of the fruits in the world, the behaviour and activities in the world on the back of like the, the shambles of the Catholic Church, um, you know, bowing their heads in shame over this constant repeating uh, paedophilia vice it, it, it's a nest of vice and these systems will not change because they won't change their policies and, uh, and uh, to hear the Pope yesterday you know bowing his head and then saying of oh, oh, the Blessed Mary will be ashamed well the whole world's ashamed by the lies God is ashamed by the constant offence and blaspheme in his face, and it's under, right up under everyone's nose, right under everybody's nose that knows what the truth is about these liars, about these wolves in sheep's clothing, and the governments that support them, and, and their state craft, their statesmanship, their, their, their unlawfulness, their leaving. These people are leaving, they get into um, yokes with these criminals and these lawless people, and then and, then they compromise the law and they break the law themselves and lead the government into that compromise without without a choice, without the the truth of, of what these motives are in the first place on the behalf of people that are kept kept starved and then you get these idiots raised up by the same fat power that thinks that they can do a better job and go and run the world and rob everybody of their law their freedoms and their liberties to choose and then you get this dialect you've got to swallow and everybody's got to eat it so I'm looking at statecraft, I've just caught these um, this uh, organisation was brought to my attention by one of my uh, relatives and, he's, and, and um, one of the members of parliament defending uh, the use of this private uh, body of sponsored uh, equipment apparatus to be utilized by education and and government bodies and it and it's uh, so I'm looking at the motives the mechanisms of these things and the utilizing under the omission of what's really in the motive so you're not given a motive and you're not given any alternative other than what what you're led to believe is the motive so quite clearly I'm going to reveal the motive without directly saying what the motive is by lawful evidence. So if those of you who have not heard of statecraft, well join the club because I've just looked it up this morning and I, I, and I, and I, I know the uh, mechanism, I know the philosophy behind it and the model that it's based on. So we're looking at the guts, the mechanics of statecraft. So I just wanted to capture these films, I have to apologise for the noisy computer, that's the only computer I've got up and running. So it's got a noisy fan, so I just want to get these uh, online pictures. If you can see the sponsors, so this is an American statecraft simulation. So it's a um, an algorithm, perhaps it's a computer, I've not looked into the, the details, simulation. So it's an algorithm of working out a process of correlating evidence to share and, and refine a process and bring up information quickly. It's taken, the, it's taken the trust away from you to put your trust in some other apparatus to do a better job than you could do yourself. That, that's, that to me is what, what's being sold. That's what is, is underneath of it. So we're looking at the motive. So it's sold as it's a useful, good thing. And there is good in it. And, I, and I'm just going to quickly go through these uh, sites. So this is the American... So use statecraft simulations as this model that will offer this service to countries, universities, governments. So it's a vehicle like a Trojan horse getting into 
in, into uh, education, into people's lives and getting volunteers. Now, this is the British link to their connection and this is the, the British. Now, I don't know if it, it's indirectly connected to this or it, there's no, there's University of Southampton, University of Dartmouth, there's a few American, um, where's, let me find. I had all the, right, here we go, here's all the 24, uh, uh, simulations I used at over 245 universities, in, so it's in universities at the moment, but there's actually, um, my cousin brought to attention uh, a, a member of parliament, I can't remember his name, but he was raising up a concern of the use of statecraft in, um, in, in a civil service department for the government. So. I haven't found any links to that, but that I, I've watched a TV program on the BBC of the Parliament Question Time where it was stated that statecraft, you know, he was putting people's fears to rest that as a private body use it, using a civil service. So this is there a connection or is there an absence of making a connection? It's just a suggestion of a connection, so when you point out a connection they just deny it. So you, 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 there's no dots to join up. So I just looked up who, well, what countries are participating in this statecraft simulation, and is there a computer, a supercomputer, AI, behind that as well that they've also not told you about? So it's joining. So this is all antichrist. This is all leaven and unlawful, and it's sold as a lawful, just thing. That that's the crux of it. So in the United Kingdom, we've got King's College. Uh, um, it doesn't say what part, it might be just one one or two people in there, you know, try and giving it a trial run. So I, I'm, not, I'm just um, brushing over the edges, I'm not really given any clearly defined substantiated factual links, so that would have to be researched. I'm just uh, looking at the, the uh, nuts and bolts. University of Bath, University College of London, University of Northampton, University of Southampton. So that's the original American where it was launched by the looks of it. But these are the things, these sites aren't that um, international relations, US foreign policy. See, it's not, it, these, these sites aren't very um, transparent. They just give you information. They don't tell you what's behind that information. It, it, it's paper thin, so it's all, all on suggestions. Well, I just clicked on research and review to have a quick browse. My computer's really slow, I'm just craning to load it. Right, here we go. Right, what else have I got? This is the advertising of the site. I'll start here, right? So I clicked, when I clicked on the site the first time, I got this link. Then I went, went back and opened the, the same link again on a different page, and I got that link. Then I got that link. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. So depending on how many times they got an algorithm that different people will get a different introduction. So that was my first introduction. So I was filtered into that box. That was my first link. That was the second link I got. That was the third. That was following on from that link. I went campaign craftware. That is campaign craftware. So that was my first link. I thought, oh, that's interesting. So not everybody gets the same, gets to see the same thing. You know, that, that can be justified. So I realised, oh, they're, they're encouraging students. Now, where do you hear about that? Do they advertise it and send everybody a letter? Or is it only those students ever get to hear of this statecraft? Oh, would you like to be partake in this statecraft? Oh, that would be nice. Yeah, but don't tell everyone. No one else knows about it. You know, it, it's completely pitched in the dark. I am participating in the statecraft simulation. Or I am a, a minister uh, and administering I am administering the statecraft simulation. Well, I'm neither of those, am I? So that was my link. So that's basically get lost. It's nothing to do with you. So that. So then I thought, well, I'll go back, and then I, I, I went again. I got this. I got into the public thing. So you put off. So I was put off. Like go away. Then I got. An, then I re refreshed, and I got a new link. 
We at Statecraft can help you with all your federal and California based campaign compliance needs. So they're selling this campaign machine where, where politicians use it and they gather all the information. So all the information, left and right sides, all going into one private body, you see, Statecraft. And you're, you're, they're selling you, oh trust us with all your information, we'll pro process it and we'll give you all the results you need. You can either be used uh, to e-file to the proper regulatory agency, view as a PDF, or so it all speeds up the process for you. What it's saying is, look, we're fine tuning everything, you don't worry, we'll do you everything. Reach our goal of becoming the software of anything campaign disclosure compliance related. And they've got all the late legal stuff involved and all drawn up, you see, all to their favour. The subsequent areas of management, and then you've got the law trying to, you know, make it fair, but it's just unfair by allowing it in the first place. So it's got all this uh, craftware, craftware, you see, craft, crafty. So craftyware, so state private politicians investing in private enterprise to do a better job because they see such a mess in the world and then they're encouraged to do this. What they don't realise is the mess that the world's in are the people that are sponsoring them in this direction, you see. So it's one hand playing both. So let's look at the word statecraft. Right, this is what they've called it. This is a politicians call it. Let's let's see what it just the definition. Um, this is the same as the Oxford. I've, this has just got a bit more. It's got a uh, thesaurus. So the skill entailed in leading the state or country. Right, the skill. So that's organisation in leading. Now it doesn't say whether it's leading on the straight level plan field or it's overseeing and looking down and leading them up the garden path you know so that's the one that's that could be um, a summary of uh, but there's a division within that there's a left and a right to that there's a good and a bad within that one definition statecraft government politics deployment the art of conducting public affairs statesmanship like again it, there's, it's a two-edged sword the art of government and diplomacy so is it just government, or is it unjust government, or is it diplomacy to do good and right for all, the government doing it, the servants of all, or is it the government doing servants for themselves and being, dipl you know, lying diplomatically, using the economical with the truth. So you can see the, the, the there's two definitions to how you could interpret it, statecraft, but it's basically the management of uh, public affairs, you know, overseership of public affairs. So that depends what's in the heart of the person, how's that viewed? Is that viewed as, oh, I'm a servant of all and I'm not worthy? Or does that mean I'm, a, or, or is it in the heart, oh, I'm better, therefore I'm educated, I can, the elite climb to the top and therefore we can make decisions on everyone's behalf because we know better and they don't know anything because they're not in the state, you see. So it, this is what I am looking at, so that, that I wanted to get that in. So this is the other other site. This is the American, so I went to the, Ameri the that was the British link in, so I went to the American servers. Statecraft automatically assigns students to teams or roles and prompts them to take actions, track progress, calculate simulation outcomes and grade student performance. So it's basically a governing engine of processing power on the behalf of everybody, all right? State, governor, state govern head, state automatic AI intelligence governing people, right? State craft, state divide it, right? Let's look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something on Facebook and just let, I'll show you um, how to uh, see what's behind the motive of, um, these models of like Facebook and these organizations what is the fruit what's the root and what fruit does it produce and then we look then we're going to look at comparisons of a good tree and we're going to look at comparisons of a corrupt tree and uh, inv I'm inviting anybody to seriously consider all of this before they make any snappy judgments to hear the matter fully before they um, miscontextualize the the whole by their own uh, put in their own unjust um, process and reasoning and equating what I'm saying before they've heard the matter correctly and given it a fair measurement because it will need to be reviewed completely before you can um, make a full 
evaluated uh, reasoned judgment on on this subject because it's all packed into it's my life experience my my testimony of the truth of Jesus Christ and and the word of God and also the fruit of the world and measuring what is just and what is unjust which is anybody can do that so that's what I'm sharing on invite whether you're a believer or not whether you're you know you consider yourself intelligent or not this is for everybody this is basic ABC common sense one and one is two or you know one additional one unit is two units so it's pretty simple stuff so this is the so if you want I'd encourage anyone to just feel around look a bit more behind this see where the money is see what else it's connected to because I don't want to take up too much time showing all these videos so there were my different so there's my search I've done them um, from Duckgate I've done the, done the British and then, then the world so there's the, the, there's the American one so that's the world one and then there's attachments, but I, I don't know if the, the Great Britain one is associated or, or, or not, so that will have to be researched. I'm, I'm just talking about the phrase statecraft, and I'm looking at the leaven, the, un, the unlawfulness within the law, and then the lawfulness opposing this statecraft and the, these modern... Um, systems like uh, Facebook and Google if you put Jesus Christ in Google it says I don't know what that is I'm sorry we don't know I don't know what you're talking about and it, there's so many things it's admitted to tell people and this is about state control this is about the the ambiguous motive of the world's heart and nature lying and deception being deceptive deceiving itself deceiving people and leading it into this this dead end it's putting its head in a noose and it's going to choke it to a computer system where once these people go down this road and they've forsaken the truth and they believe this lie they're not going to be able to ever turn back because because everybody's going to be in no one will want to come out Right, let's look at these testimonies. Let's look at these people who've swallowed this hook, line, and sinker because they're, they're not looking at the overall picture. They're looking at the cat. They're looking at their lives on a stick. Doctor, doctor, doctor. They're looking, oh, look at me. You know, they're just looking for their, their day to shine. And I'm not knocking any um, genuine um, good works and, and good fruit within these systems. I'm looking at the, the foundation and the, the cage work of utilizing of these talent these talented people how these people are utilized their talents are utilized um, dishonestly and, and they think they're doing a, a wonderful job and they're all part of this this whole thing but they don't realize that they, they these aren't the people who set it up these are people who just oh yeah it's brilliant you know I'm looking at the people who set this up and put it on the table for these people to run with and then you come across, well, they're approaching students the same way. Hey, do you want to come along with this? Oh, yeah, but don't ask any questions. It's just great because all these good people are doing it. There, and they, they're on board as well. Yeah, these are all on board. You know, we've got all these on board. So it's trustworthy. It's good. Look, we've got all these testimonies, right? But we, you haven't got the, the, the testimony you haven't got. Well, who set it up? Who's the money? And let's look at the law behind it. Let's look at the uh, role of the Roman Catholic Vatican dominance. Let's look at the unlawfulness of our local government in the UK and America. And let's look at statecraft and the principles. So I wanted to get these uh, videos and as an introduction. So I go to the British Statecraft Institute for Statecraft. It, it's the same thing, whether it's exactly the same thing, but it's... All content is temporary removed from this site, pending investigation into the theft of data from the Institute for Statecraft and its program. The integrity, integrity, that's, just think of it the opposite to that. The non-integral initiative, the motive which is deceptive. Initial findings indicate that the theft was part of a campaign, part of a false flag. Oh look, we're, we're being hacked, you see, just to show that we're the integrity of the initiative, that's what they want you to read, the integrity of the, we're integral, 
And we're, we're looking at this um, hack, researching public encounter in the threat to European democracies and disinformation and other forms of hybrid warfare. So they're using the people who are spreading the misinformation to get this institution up running. Then they get a lot of people thinking that they're fighting the, the, the war, and the war are the people that have started up statecraft, getting good people into this information, and they can get all the information in one pocket, you see. And these people don't question, these idiots are state-crafted people, right? Um, where are they? Statecraft, state-crafted, state-crafted, education, state-crafted, antichrist, state-crafted, 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 liars, liars, deceived. I'm not saying that they're not good and they're not intelligent and they've got brains and they might even be Christians, you know, people claiming to be Christians in there. But they're antichrist and they're state-crafted models of, of behaviour. They're conditioned, like we've all been conditioned, brainwashed in some degree or other by the powers of this world, by Satan, by the admission, the absence. Two things, the real, the real power of Satan and force, opposing God, that God created all things. And, he, and Satan's there as a, 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 to be adverse against God. And mankind has free agency whether to choose God or whether to choose that other force. Man is in unbelief without faith. So it doesn't believe in it, God, it believes in itself, and itself is Satan dominated. Oh no, Satan doesn't exist. Well, wrong exists, clearly, so what's the wrong? Oh, it's just this, it's just that, it's just up the road, we'll fix it. It's the absence of the truth by lying. Because these people are deceived, they're deceived in their own minds, they can't see it, and the world is put in its head in the powers with, along with the Vatican Church and their powers. Now whether they believe it, whether there's a um, one core intelligent body governing this whole world is, is questionable, but it is all directed by the absence of the truth and lawfulness and right. And I, I am going to show that clearly for anybody. I, this, this, is go, this will go before a high court judge and turn any high court judge and any person on this planet over. But will it get a view? Will it get an honest hearing? Will you give it an honest hearing? We, sh we shall find out and I invite people to just to stay and uh, watch this testimony. So the website will be re relaunched shortly. In the meantime we expect to be able to publish an analysis of the hack. So question, is that a genuine hack? Was that a hack put in by the same hand within a, in, in, in a, a, a compound martialized body and good people were really do believe they're going after a hack and then there's people in that body who are deceitful and that their motive is not really sincere like the good people in it thinking they're doing something good so there's two motives behind it and and, we're, and the public see the public face the public facebook if you divide face what's face Faith is profile, faith is, inf is knowledge, faith faces your whole, your, your whole profile of your personality. It's a whole visual of your person. What's a book? So divide face and book. So you've got a face, a, pro a book of profiles, a phone book of personalities, a correlated collection of statecraft, Facebook in Perth, um, personalities how do we get that information to everybody and how do we keep it fat how do we feed it well we get these dumb state crafted antichrist liars the public in 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 deception and lost in denial and then we get them to twitter and then we twitter and then we can correlate all the information in twitter and put it on our profile book on our facebook twitter little birdies facebook we listen to the little tweets it's just like the old um, dark underworld, the little birdie told me. Gathering intelligence, you see. It's an intelligence agency, state-run, shadow world, unlawful mechanism and apparatus. 
We are keen to trace both source of the hack, so they're putting their hands in two public body people, one don't care, one can be manipulated because they're cheat, and then one people will go running after the good, like good little boys and girls that they've been conditioned to lawfully. But what they should do is say lawfully, no, I'm having no part of this, it's wrong. So they compromise themselves by allowing themselves to be groomed at college, take, oh look, I'm part of something, I'm special, you know, grease them right up, put the carrot, and then, and then they compromise themselves and become criminals. And then, then the people who get them in that position think, these people are idiots, we can, they're lying now, we know, we've got them. So when they realise they're in a lie, they're going to keep their mouth shut. Why? Because we've profiled them in our Facebook and we, we know how to control these people. We know how to control the mob. We know how to control the mob. We know how to control these people because they're on Facebook. They're all on Facebook and they're all on Twitter. We know what the mob does, right? When they feel guilty and ashamed, because we make them feel guilty and ashamed for being a loser, right? They're not going to want to shame, show face in the public institute and, and look a right donkey. So they keep their mouth shut in their compromise. So if anyone realises their compromise, we just replace them because these people will feel embarrassed and they won't come out in the public and say, look, I've been part of a whole lot of lie. I'm embarrassed, I spent my whole career and upbringing and all my dreams and hopes and, and my bubbles, bubbles popped. But I'm too embarrassed to tell my friends and my family and myself and admit it, so I'm going to keep my mouth shut and go and, you know, shrink and hide under my bed. And these people would just to put another, you know, there's another patsy in the queue straight after the compromise is, is uh, dispensed in the bag wrapped up and thrown in the dog bin and this is how these liars work how, this is how these systems operate and, and, and that's how the status quo models the world in its own image Twitter, Facebook so that's what, where I'm going to start so look, look up, look into these things um, statecraftsims.com stay at the same place all the information that's the American main public face I wouldn't say there's any information dictionary and there's all the links that I got from first contact and the second link and that's a part of another aspect of its software and utilization so I'm going to close there just this is just to um, include in the video of uh, Beware of the leaven. Right, hi there. Right, this is a uh, statecraft. This is going to be on. Excuse me, the uh, leaven and unleaven, and the subject of statecraft, which is lawlessness in a lawful, in in the pretense of lawfulness in 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 the state, in the world today, in the nations, in the independent so-called Christian lawful nations. So we're looking at state law, uh, common law, uh, uh, the injustice of state law, the justice of common law and the principles and the law. We're looking at the word of God, we're looking at the difference between the body of Christ, the believer, and the false Christian church, mainly the ecumenical church, all the churches together in state, which is the the Roman which the head of that is the Mother of Harlots, which is a Roman Catholic order. So we're going to look at look from all the perspectives, the lawful perspective, from the law. Then we're looking at the Christian perspective, which is where the law comes from, exactly the same principles. Then we're looking at the unlawfulness in the name of the law. So whatever, this is a public witness and this is the truth. This is, this is more true, as true, no more true than the ABC. So I'm just laying, it, laying down the evidence as a lawful witness to the world, to the politicians, to the state, to every, every citizen that you can't, can't deny us. You can switch this off YouTube, you can ignore it, you can stop listening to the preachers in the street. You can stop believing your conscience. You can stop. 
You know, you, can, you can't continue to be part of the traffic and guilty and toot your own and complain and try and do good and put the world right when you're still ignorant of this one simple truth that you're lying, you're deceived and you're supporting this unlawfulness by not speaking out against it, by tolerating it, getting money, government money, to carry on building on the problem. So we're going to be looking at all the mechanisms from the Word of God, um, from the light, from the light of the Word, which is Jesus Christ. He is the embodiment of God in the flesh. So we're looking at uh, faith alone, in Christ alone, the Gospel, the Word of God, which is the written Word, which is God's Word, it's Christ's Word, it's God's heart, mind and will and intelligence laid out for the believer that when the believer receives the light and the word they have that extra witness to as a standard of what that that truth is on the conscience in their lives in their fruit so we're looking at the two trees the good tree and the evil evil tree we're looking at the the clean stream and the dirty cisterns of the world all mixing their water in the the Vatican sewers and the city the city involvement in that, the London government involvement and the corporate involvement, everybody's involvement. So I'm looking at all the components, individuals, organisations and bodies, heads, figureheads, servants, civilians, private, public, human beings, what what we've all got in common, we're all the same sinners, people. So I'm going to start with a word of prayer and read some scriptures, just to clarify the truth of what I'm saying. <laughs> then I'm going to walk you around my uh, diagram and unfold by evidence, by what's in plain sight in the public eye, what is in the Word of God. They're two of the same thing and, and unbelief doesn't make that f fact go away. It just shows how blind people are in the right eye. So before I continue, I just want to invite you to look. If you see the um, that little dot in the centre of the horizontal bar, which represents the truth and the right way, the balance. So if you if you can imagine that as a tightrope, and then look at two balances from that perspective. On, on the wire like that so one one side is the the, the, the civil government well powers behavior and the, the other side is the consequence of that when, when it's unjust so that's a just fair government and law and when the, when the government start misbehaving it causes that for the public so that's the perspective we're looking at so we're looking at the two axes that, that axis looking at it from that way looking down the tightrope from that way and then looking from the tightrope that way that's what we're looking at we're not looking at the Union Jack we're looking at a three dimensional two dimensional uh, scale of measurement left right up down balance and counterbalance so we're looking at all those perspectives so we've got left and right of the counterbalance, left and right of the other counter, the opposite counterbalance. And this is what people don't consider, they're just too quick to give their opinion and their view without considering looking at all the facts. So I'm going to start with a, start with a word of prayer first. Dear Gracious Father, I thank you for this day and this opportunity to give testimony and share your word. I pray for your Holy Spirit. Father, in your grace to lift me and for your word and Holy Spirit to edify those in the world who are lost, those in the body who, who may be seeking your understanding and edification. I pray for all, all all's needs to be realised, Father, all to be lifted and gathered to edification that our hearts and spirit be received and uh, apply the the, the grace of your blessings or from your word to renew the mind in the, in the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit is continually glorious Father and, and loving and 
of your will and it continually refreshes us when we apply ourselves. I thank you for the blessings and, and the obvious truth, the simplicity given to us by by your heart, by your son and by your word. And I pray that these these scriptures will be plain and your word and, and love will be magnified in, in all that we do and, all, and that the world will see the simplicity, Father, of the truth and come and come to the throne of grace and call and believe in Jesus Christ to call upon you to receive that salvation that's been dispensed today that they may know Jesus, they may know that he loved them and died for their sins and has saved them if they if they accept his salvation through faith, through through the through the way and the word that has been put down, Father, by faith alone, by trusting and believing and turning from sin turning from all that's wrong in the world, turning from law, uh, turning away from wrong, lies and lawlessness from our sins and receiving the forgiveness and the remedy of those sins, the gift of your beloved Son. I pray that he be glorified, Father, he be magnified, that his name be precious and we will shrink, we will, we will decrease as the Lord's uh, spirit and knowledge in the world and in the public conscience will increase and people will know where to look for your word and your holiness. And we pray, Father, we may be humble and meek. We may be uh, examples and your light will be magnified in our, our weaknesses and our in our lives. And I ask these things, Father, and, I, and pray, we pray. We pray for your, your word to have free course and we ask you and I thank you, Father, in the name of your beloved Son, our Lord and our Saviour, my Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ who came in the flesh, who, was, who died for all sins and was resurrected. He's on your right hand today, Father. He's in heaven. He's not, he's not in the secret places. He's not in the basement. He's not appeared to people privately. He's on the right, your right hand and he rules on your throne with you. And he's in the flesh. He's sovereign and holy. And he will return. His, his word will be thy word and thy will be done. And it was all completed on his cross and we are realising those works in in their eventuality, Father, by the truth, by revealing all that was sin, by the prophecy of Jesus Christ, his advent into the uh, human, uh, the, the physical realm of, of thy creation through your Son and appearing holy and, and glorious to glorify your name and, and lay down his, his, his life his holy precious blood that we may be cleansed from all sin and restored to your restored as he was eternally restored that we may be born into that eternalness that we may become created with a beginning and receive an eternal without a beginning or end through the door through your son through our lord jesus christ and i pray father that the world will grow in grow in knowledge grow in hope and, and seek only the Lord, only the truth, and I pray for the truth. I pray for the Spirit to move people's consciences towards all good and all right, to see that it is from your Son, from thy heart and thy word, and I pray, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so I'm going to start in, just got a few scriptures. Uh, Corinthians. Um, now, just a quick, brief note about uh, for, for any brother and sister, and it's something uh, that um, I'm, I'm, as, I, as I grow as a believer and as a student in my walk and go with those uh, full circles of experience, you know, daily, and you refresh your lessons you have. I'm, I'm just reviewing kind of a, a, a new a newer completion of my understanding in my my growth in, in my in my walk as I grow and I'm looking at the two books of Corinthians the first one is almost now what I've realized is you can't just dip in and you know um, exegete what that particular verse means without the, the full understanding of the plan of salvation first and then what what Paul was teaching in the epistles to each individual body of believers, whether that's the Romans, the Corinthians, 
Um, and within those bodies, you've got both Jew and Gentile. And you've got unbelief, believing Jew and unbelieving Jew. And you've got a believing Gentile and an unbelieving Gentile. So you've got all, all that ground to cover. So every epistle will cover every single believer of the the process that Paul is revealing in those script, in, in the whole books of the epistle. So it's almost like Paul, the first book is of, of Corinthians to me is almost like Paul un, unveiling the whole complete testimony he had of the Lord's working through the, through the grace of the, the Saviour, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, from the Father, the whole working through the believer. And Paul is revealing the whole, whole rotation of his experience. His milk, knowing, receiving, and his meat by walking around what he's received. And then, and then he moves on to the next. He says, remember all what I've revealed to you in context, and then move on to carrying that on a day-to-day -day basis. Because the saints, the just live by faith. So Paul has to expand what, what all the believers received. And then it moves it on. Then the believer moves on to walking in that understanding daily with his experience in his sanctification and grace. That doesn't all happen in one go, it's a process. So if you're a new believer and a student, uh, that's something I didn't understand until the end of my walk. So if I can put that understanding at the beginning of your walk, that will, I know that will keep you from falling into pitfalls. So the, the, if you're a student, you, your church is in Christ, in, in in fellowship with the Father, with His Son, and in in His Son, in the Father, before the before the Son and the Father, in the Holy Spirit. And your church is in your private quarters, in your closet, with your relationship first. That's your church, in the believer, and then you learn, then you grow, in, in that fellowship. And understanding and your walk and then and then and then when then if all believers are doing that then those believers would gather naturally to other believers and and or gather together gather their hearts and minds together where a believer or a teacher or an elder is sharing a more communal um, edification a communal lesson like a, a rem remembrance breaking of bread and, and giving a scripture reading, like a, a Sunday service, so you can gather either online or you could gather in a location where that would be lawfully held by the um, approved believers. But until you know how who's approved and isn't approved, it's important for the student to build up first. So that's why I'm saying it's important not to go running to trust this believer, this elder or that elder, you need to always trust the Lord Jesus first and grow in the Word, and and that's important. It's um, if you read uh, Jeremiah seventeen, Proverbs one, First Timothy, and then you consider that the Lord is jealous for everyone to have that personal relationship with Him solely, all the time, every minute, every moment. Heavenly Father wants you to put all your petitions upon Him, confess your sins, stay in that fellowship. And you've got the whole world and the whole Christian false body pulling you away from that. So that's the first step of faith, is to you know, remain on that foundation when you first believe. And walk in that first step daily. Not running, not trying to run ahead and achieve things, not trying to do works. But to grow in that grace daily unto good works until the Lord's ready to move though you know show you what he's done with you show you what he's taken you from how he's cleaning you up he, he how he's cleansed you up now he's cleaning you and dressing you down then he's showing you how to do that for yourself and then you're walking in that with him so depending on how, how poorly or sick you were to start with where he saved you from because you're saved in your worst possible state at your peak and the lord's saved you and said right now I've cleaned you and fixed you spiritually but now you're a physical shell of that person you've got to walk with that now I'm going to teach you to and you'll stagger and you'll you may fall if you if you're really 
you've got an incurable disease, if you've had some really horrible things and, and your life's just gone from bad to worse and you've never had an opportunity to even put your hand up and say, please may I got ask a question, you've been hammered from the start and you've never had that opportunity. So there's different sides of life, so everybody needs to realise that the Lord is um, personal to each and every one and no, no one knows each and every one as the Lord does. But the Lord will appoint people with, with the whole authority to say, well, what the Lord does and what the Lord doesn't. That's why, why the Lord will erase proof believers and that's why the Lord will equip uh, students to know well their own approval and what's not approved in their life, what is approved in their life and therefore what's approved in the body and what isn't approved in the body. But that takes time and study. So I just wanted to add that quickly because I'm going to jump right on the last chapter of Second Corinthians. We're in the second book of Corinthians and this is just to encompass what I'm, my testimony, the, the two or three lawful witnesses which come from the book, the stick of Judah, which is the, the, the book of, if you read Deuteronomy, Leviticus, and all, all the Old Testament, that is the law. That's God's heart, mind and will through line upon line, precept upon precept, given that only exclusivity to the Jews through that bloodline. So the, the, that is a law, that is a testament to themselves of the truth of God and the existence of Jehovah is that, that people and that seed and the Old Testament, right? That's one, one important point. And I'm going to come back in just a moment. I've got a distraction. Right, so back, folks. So, Judah, we got the witness, the Old Testament, from the prophets, from the blood, from the seed, from the people today, from the people yesterday, and the people in God's heart, mind, and eternity that he brought into existence when he chose Abraham, and then Isaac and Jacob to be the vessels of, of that, that knowledge. And we have a record in, in Deuteronomy, in, in the, the prophets, of all the scriptures, the Kings, the Chronicles, the Psalms, Exodus, all the stories, all the real events, all the historical events and the spiritual light. And then we have, if you read um, e Ezekiel 34, chapter 34, it's God's heart and mind to, to all people for Israel and to the, his seed and to the people who, who, who are in a position to be law, um, overseers of the law, officers of the law, princes in Israel and today it's prime ministers and leaders and the like, kings, rulers, it, it's, these are types and shadows. So if you go to uh, Ezekiel 34, 35 and 36 up to 30, read 37 and then stop about 38, you'll, you'll get an idea of the, the spiritual nature and then, and then we come to what's called the stick of Joseph. A stick is just a record that a scroll of knowledge would be kept on, a scribe would keep a stick, a roll, a scripture and, we're, and it would be one long roll. So when there's a new prophet or a new addition to the chronicles or the history of that people, the scribes would have lawfully uh, kept a faithful record and it would have been done lawfully in witnesses. It would be checked, double checked and lawfully measured as a standard ruler. So that was the law, the principles of all that goes on today that's right and good and just. To do things orderly and correctly on a foundation of law established principles come from one place only that was God's heart mind and will given to Abraham given to his seed given to his people and that is within the people that's within their genes and the enemy knows that the devil knows that and the Catholic Church know that or there's knowledge of people in the Catholic Church behind the Catholic Church that know that so then we have the stick stick of Joseph and that's in Ezekiel 37 and now the stick of Joseph is Christ because it's both testaments the old and the new and everlasting the once and forever 
sacrifice for sin completed. So we've got the two sticks now, one one rod. See? Christ. Stick of Judah, stick of Joseph. And then we've got the, the physical gathering of the head, the head of, uh, in the people of Israel, in, in a type, and a shadow, you've got the head of Judah coming back with the seed of Israel which is in Ephraim, which is in the house of Joseph. So you've got the stick of Joseph, which is Christ. Christ. Uh, Joseph was a type of Christ, the wheat sheaf, raised up ab above all the others, the star, the brightest star. And in all, all Joseph's life of Christ, it's a type of the Messiah, the blessings running over the wall, the fullness in the heart, Joseph, which all this... You've got the inner seed from uh, Rebecca's line. You've got um, Benjamin, Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. And then you've got from uh, Rebecca, uh, Rebecca, Rachel, sorry. Rachel, you've got Joseph. Rachel's mum is Joseph, Benjamin, Ephraim and Manasseh from that, that blood line of mother and father, which was Jacob. And then you've got Rebecca's children and... Uh, and the other concubines, you've got all the other tribes, Judah, which was would have been Rebecca, not Rachel. You see, she so got the outer family and the inner family in the heart, but they're all all one seed and one family. So you got the gathering in the you got the old, and then you'll have the gathering in the new. The restoration of those two, that two bloodlines. That's what I'm going to be covering and, and then looking at it, the world with the Gentiles the un unbelievers all that that's against that in the world and all that in the world that's for that and all that in the world that is truly for that consistently and all that the world says that they're for that but they're really compromised and for that it's gone like that they're using that in just unrighteously and that's a problem and that's where we are today. So I'm going to cover those areas. So back to um, 2 Corinthians 12. In the New Testament, in the word of, word of the Lord, in the word of God. In the King James authorised version. Authorised because it was officially done by uh, a, a God-appointed official who's lawfully chosen to make law, to write law, so it was, it's not a corrupt lawful uh, measurement to say that, you know, God, God, God rules, it's just to lawfully show that it's true, and it was done lawfully by an authorised uh, sovereign who got a lawful body of people to publicly and lawfully witness and measure the scriptures with two opposing bodies either side, so that, like in Parliament, where they thrash it out lawfully and come up and until they got a lawful, uh, true, true agreement, because if you got Catholics on one side and Protestants on the other, or Puritans on one side and you got the old order on the other, right? What what do you think is going to come out of the mix? Well, the truth, because it's done publicly under scrutiny in the law. So anyone trying to corrupt the scripture, the Puritans are going to like line it up, and if the Puritans are to be in, to being unjust, well those law unlawful people are going to be against it and they're going to try and tip it their way. But that's why we got the authorised version in the King James. It's a standardised, lawful figurehead. You know, God ordained these, these powers, noble powers. You know, there's good, noble people in the body of Christ. Occasionally, you know, the Lord uses noble people. King James sinful as he was, he'd done a noble thing, his fruits were noble and because it, it blessed our nation with, with the word of God and the law so that's what we're looking at and looking at well, well what law do we live under today then and, and yesterday and, and all, all back, back until the past you know that law has never been, it's been there but it's never been kept Honestly and truly, that, and that's what our government is. It's a, it's a, a, a model to keep, keep wickedness on the straight and narrow, 
from doing that, but the scales have been nailed down like this. They're not even bothering him with that anymore. It's just like a, a, a farce because the whole world's just gone that way. Nobody's, you know, anyone who's do, trying to do that is not going to get a chance. They're just standing in the minority on, on the on the centre pivot, on the axis, on the hinge, on the uh, um, halfway point of balance. The, the centre, right. Second Corinthians, chapter thirteen, the final chapter, the final reckoning. This, this is the third time. This is Paul the apostle, a witness of the resurrected, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the given, given Paul the fullness and the commission to share the gospel to the Gentile believer, the Gentile world, with the Jewish gospel, to the Jew and the Gentile, to the Gentile um, body in Corinth, among all other people in that region, inclusively. This is the third time I am coming to you, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, shall every word be established. So every lawful point will be established by two or three witnesses. Every word, every lawful word that is spoken that is true, that's what the, every word, every word is a true word of honesty and integrity, it's a true point of law. Every word in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Now that comes from Deuteronomy. That's the principle of all law, all, all, all justice, all reasoning, all measuring of the law by a standard law. And principle of that law, and that principle is God's law. And it all, there's no other law to draw a straight line from. Man, man's intellect doesn't do it because man's bent from the beginning and dishonest. So how can man come up with a just law? How can an unjust people justly write a law to justly measure themselves? It comes from God. And, and, and any, any, other, any denial of that is simply that denial. It's delusion and denial. You deny, you're denying the truth. The simplicity of the truth, common sense. Right, so let's go to well, let's go to First Timothy because this is a very important contextual viewpoint of, of, of Christ and the Father's and the Holy Spirit's heart, mind, and will for all men. Constantly, even as probation changes, even though the dispensational gates open and close, the Lord's heart, mind, and will is always the same. It's consistently just. Consistently wise and glorious, but always merciful, ever merciful, ever, 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 ever looking, looking out to help people. Even even people who have deservedly been punished, the Lord's always looking to be merciful to make their suffering less worse. But He's just; He has to punish people. He can't deny Himself. Right, let's go to First Timothy. But He's mercifully. Can deliver people and turn that what he can turn a punishment into a blessing like Paul you know Paul was persecuting the church killing people and he was the he was the least little person being drawn up to be the sharpest to go after the Christian believer zealously because he was um, like an amateur an amateur is somebody who's more passionate than a professional got more knowledge than the professional got more heart and interest in the he, he's interested in the whole lot rather than just one narrow aspect to make a living and become a professional in that field. He, he's an amateur. is is a whole heart and passion of a you know a, a young zealous um, believer to learn all there is about that subject. And Paul was that little vehicle to go up gnashing after the kicking against the with all the other sharpened people. Going with them, you know, resisting the truth, and then he was converted in the way by the by the Lord to show him that you know he's, he got it all wrong. That he'd become self-righteous, he'd become a, a fool and a prick, he'd become a, a murderer, a liar, complainer, a blasphemer. 
and a liar, he deceived himself, being zealous for the law, which which condemned him. And then it, then it broke him, you see, and then, then he was prisoner to the gospel, and the Lord turned all that murder, that blaspheme, all that offence, into the most wonderful gift to share with everybody, not only the Jew, but the Gentile. He, he made an example of that, that criminal. And Paul went even delivered other criminals, other little people that were, you know, not not in such a big stage as Paul, because Paul was born into the, right in the heart of the world, right in the bosom and purse of the world's systems. But he met people all walks of life where he could see the, the fatherless, the least, getting caught up, that little, that little member getting stirred up by the mass, being held up on the seesaw by the weight. And they become, those little people become the sharpest. Look at Joseph Smith, look at Stalin, look at Hitler. Look at all these popes, you know. Are these dear little hearted, like amateur believers who start up really passionately, and when they get there on their seat in power, they're, they're completely compromised by the world. And, and sh they're the mo they become the most sharpened people, but they could be one of the most childlike hearted people you're ever likely to meet. So when you meet them at in the public eye, you go, what a wonderful person this is, what a really lovely heart. But you don't look at all the power behind them and the influence, the people holding those people up, putting those people on those seats, influencing those people. And those people may not necessarily see their overall effect on the whole body. Like, does the Catholic Church see its overall effect on believing that, that the Catholic head is the mouthpiece of God for Christ, where it's completely anti-Christ and anti what the Word teaches. So it can't be both. So either the, the Bible's wrong, or these men are right, and, and you need other Bibles. Well, how many Bibles do you need? Well, how come there's a, a plethora of Bibles against the one authorised Bible? And the authorised Bible was a, um, predated all of those Bibles. So there's another evidence against these liars, against these men who are deceived. And I'm going round and round and round. Thinking, what am I looking for? I'm looking for Timothy, and then I pass it. Right, Timothy 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Even the popes, even kings, even evil men, even despots, even... You know, people like uh, Hitler, you know, not thankful for what they're doing, but thankful for the, the Lord's given us a creation and life and we've got the free agency and we can see when people make bad choices and the consequence. We've got to be thankful for these lessons, whether, whether they're believed or not. You've got to be thankful for everything, your breath, because no, no, we, we didn't create ourselves. So the Lord's saying, well, well, I expect you to be grateful for the whole thing, not just, you know, thinking you, your part's important and special. No, you be grateful for the whole opportunity of life. That's what he's saying. For kings, for that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in good list and honesty. So I exhort you to be praying for these people, supplications. Supplications, you know, that's considering what these people are going through, what their needs are and then prayers and interceding for these people on their behalf and giving thanks to God for all the, the opportunity for right and wrong and our agency to choose whether to do to serve good, to serve right, to serve God or to serve man you know, to serve man rightly or to serve man unjustly to serve God rightly is the same thing as serving man rightly but you can serve man rightly in, in the absence of God that's transgression. So you're 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 not all all the way there. You're half complete, but that doesn't mean your motive's not good and your conscience is not good. You're just absent of the truth, the full truth of, of the knowledge of God. But you're you're transgressing the law, and you can end up serving bad people with your goodness. And this is what we're, I have, we'll be looking at. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour. For kings, I'll read that again, verse 2. For kings, for all that are in authority, all those that are leader, not just the prime ministers, but all the people who serve down the line, all the leadership positions, all the way in the compartmentalised 
units of the civil service, all all that process and administrate in that in the houses, the lords, the government, the royal houses, all their families, all you know, everything to do with it, we should be praying and supplicating towards to God on their behalf that we may lead, that we may have the you know, that we may have a, a we may not get choked by the by the dominance and lies and powers and the corruption and continual compromise. That's why we should be praying. So, uh, uh, is is the main focus on this, or is the main focus on something else in the believer's heart? I can't speak for every believer. I can only speak for what I see, and what I see is not a complete picture. So I, I've only got that to go on. And I can only go on the fruits of what I do see. Is that the absence of what is not going on? Or is that the predominance of not going on, just outdoing the minority of that which it should be going on? I, I, I can't honestly get an accurate measure because, I, I, like anyone else, I see darkly. But I've seen the bad fruit. I see that these things in my own life have gone by the wayside. So I can only presume... You know, it's the same adversity for every believer, which is why we're, remo you know, caught, we're always uh, exhorted to to keep us, keep one another in remembrance of these things because we we, we forget ourselves. Verse three: For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So it's the Lord's heart and mind for all men to be saved. You know, like the Pope like the Archbishop of Canterbury, like the royal families, like all the kings of the world, like all the um, Islamic nations, like all the Islamic Esau's princes, all the relatives of that that um, relationship of the human race, for all the, all the all of Judah, all of Israel to be regrafted into their into their um, vine, into their heart, into God, into the Father, into the Son and in, with the Holy Spirit into in into that um, that relationship again, like the prophet would have experienced, and like the blessings they would have experienced from the the Holy Ghost and the glory of God being coming out of the temple after the high priest had made a, the offering, the blood offering, the Passover offering, and and the Lord would have been pleased with it and sanctified the whole family of Israel that had been filled with the Holy Spirit or encompassed and filled with the Holy Spirit temporarily and held up in that gracious love and they would have all known God they would have all it's all they would have all been like they're born again Christians born again in that permanently they've had that permanent fellowship just by faith alone and not through the works of the old order the old schoolmaster through the high priest they'd have all been all, they'd have all experienced that within their own single lives and Christ would have been their high priest and, their, and all the pieces of the body, all the measures of the body would have been given in one measure, one sole dose in the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ by his holy precious blood, just death, burial and resurrection just believing or receive that completeness that he's given and it's the Lord for who will have all men to know that, who will have all men to be saved, to know Jesus and to receive what Jesus has done for them on their behalf and come to, unto the knowledge of that truth, of the truth, the truth of God, the truth of Jesus Christ, the truth of all truth stems from that eternal heart. For there is one God, one truth, one mediator, one advocate between God and so between man and truth, there's one mediator, one door, one advocate between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. Why the man, Christ Jesus? Because that's God in the flesh of a man. And he died to be the door, to be the doorway, to be the light into that relationship with God, the one God, the truth, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So there's a probationary period for the whole human race and that will come to an end. And he completed that in the middle and he said, prophecy, he said, I'm eternal and what I do on this cross and what I've done through this resurrection unto, unto, my, unto the life I, I, I eternally hold in the beginning, like he testified. He said, it will, the world, all, all, all the choosing of not to believe me will come to a head. 
and it will be testified in, in the future, in due time, that when the world, that because of my holiness and my truth, and you rejected it, all that is untrue will make manifest itself, and it will fall down and collapse. And at the, at the end time, I will gather my people, I will save my church, and I would judge the world in judgment and wrath because they believe a lie. They still continue to reject me, all, even though they know the truth, willfully know the truth. They don't want to know me. So they're gonna, they're, I'm going to judge them. And that, and that period will happen. And what I've written down in my words, said, say, said the Lord, and what, what, what he has written down in this word, is true. And it, it can be truly measured lawfully by just simple observation and faith, trusting that it is true. Because if you don't believe in a map to get to a true destination, how on earth are you going to get to that destination if you've never been to it before without a map? Wherefore I am ordained as preacher, this is Paul, and an apostle, which is a witness, if somebody's personally seen Christ resurrected. Now only those men did, no one else has ever since that time of Paul, the apostle. Because that was their testimony. They had to die for that testimony. Otherwise, they would, they can't. How can they live by faith when they know they've seen Christ? So how can they teach a gospel of faith if they hadn't seen He who that that was faithful? So they saw the faithfulness, the complete faithfulness of Christ revealed to them personally, and everybody had a witness, and that witness and glory. And that, and that gospel, that good news was passed and people believed by faith. When they had faith, then they could see the evidence of that witness in the world, in life, in their own lives and in all creation. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands with, without, wrath, without wrath and doubting. In like manner also the women adore themselves in modest apparel. So then we're looking at the fruits, the Holy Spirit working through the believer here of what, what the Lord desires for man and women alike and their, their behaviours. So I'm not going to... F I'll just finish it off quickly. In like manner, also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness, to humility, like men and women should be humble, realise that they were dirt. You know, they, got, they only got out... They've only been saved through the skin of their teeth, and they're nothing special. You know, the, the Lord's not a respecter of people. He's, he died to save all men. With shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair, not with leaven and, and, and you know like the world's image, or gold or pearls or costly array. So that's it for each person to to look and and uh, um, uh, evaluate how they um, adore them adorn themselves with uh, things of the world, and that's where I think everyone has to be temperate and 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 uh, humble and honest, but with but which becometh women professing godliness with good works, not not professing with, oh look at me, but by actions. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to observe authority over the man, but to be silent. So it's clear that the the the, the, the man wears the trousers, and the woman's trousers are the man's trousers. So in in in, in individual lives, you just have as much authority as a man, but in the in the body, in the Christian body, to, as a mouthpiece for Christ and the Word, the man has the authority, it's quite clear, because Paul's the, the head man. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to observe authority over the man, but to be in silence. So there's a, there's a clear... Um, Division there in in a in a man and a woman a wife, husband and wife relationship with with where the authority, the headship authority starts and the equality of those two headships there's one one headship in the man which which headships are one in Christ now in the church there's only one headship in the body in the, which is Christ and that headship covers both for man and the woman but the word comes from the man's lips as in Christ, he's not a chauvinist, he's just putting the man to be the, the mouthpiece, it doesn't mean the man's the most sensitive, and the man, he, he's the man because he, God knows what, what this world's like, and, and what a woman is not equipped to deal with, and that's why, the, that, that's why too, that's why you need a help, that's why the man needs a help me, 
you know, the man's, the man's weak and the woman's weak. Together they're weak on their own, but, but one in Christ, they're stronger, you see. Now, whether they're single or apart, one in Christ, they're stronger than not in Christ. But when there's a man and a wife, they have to, they have to be as strong as if they were if they were single together. It's like a, a two-leg, you know, like a, a three-legged race. You've got to tie, and if, if one of you's not running and trying to fight the other one, well, you might as well give up. You might as well undo that and sit on the sideline and otherwise you're going to be clawing each other's hair out. Well, that, that's that scripture I wanted to uh, cover. Right, and I'm going to do just... Um, right, I'm going to go to John 3, 1 John 2 first, just to cover some the worldly... just some contrast in what is, what is right, what's true and what's not true. And looking at these phrases, Antichrist, right? What is Antichrist? Well, there's the Antichrist and Antichrist. Anti-good, anti-law, anti-moral, anti-truth anti-lawfulness, anti-righteousness. It's a law unto itself, it's the nature of lies. The absence of doing what is right, the omission of what is true, and you holding up that, holding up the truth in the name that it's true, but where the motive is is dishonest and the fruit is that it shows its, itself for what it is. And that's what we're cut, that's what I am, uh, encompassing with it, with his testimony and the word. Um, right, I want James five eventually, so I mark that. So I pass it. I'm going to go to First John chapter two. Now these are the um, the general epistle. Now, 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 what's the general epistle? This is like a capstone of what what's being taught by Paul the apostles. This is like. A general summary of that whole completion and and testifying well that's what generally that's what that is and that this is my testimony that that is true and that is true and this is true and the true the word is true completely all the way through truly because it's truth because it's of God and Christ is faithful and the spirit bear witness of the, of, of, of the truth of all things and the prophecy of that truth manifest in the world and testified in the holy word which was in brief through men who wrote the scriptures these men penned the scriptures of their uh, of their testimony of the holy spirit and that's what we have we have a record of the holy spirit in these faithful children in these faithful believers first john 2 antichrist right my little children these things write i unto you that ye sin not if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So the believer is forgiven of all sins and they're baptised by and born again. They have the spirit of holiness in their flesh. So they are twofold. They are born again. They are saved, holy, complete. But in their physical connection and their unity with their flesh, they're out, they're out of sorts. And Christ is doing that work in that person's life at the point he saves them. So that person can sin, but that person isn't living for sin because he can't sin because he's born again. So if that born again believer puts his foot into sin, he's not sinning, he's just returned to the flesh and sin re-sinning in the flesh. Re-sinning when he's been already forgiven of all of his sins, which he can't do. So he's doing something he can't do, and doing something he can't do, he's redoing it and causing sin. So a believer can sin, but in the eyes of God, he's forgiven of his sins. So he needs to confess. This is what the first verse is saying. We have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That wasn't a one, once and forever, and then, then you sin and you've lost it. Or, or you never had it in the first place. No, it's it's once and forever, and it's all the light's always on. So if a believer puts his foot to the right or puts his foot to the right, left, he can confess, Lord, I sinned, and then that believer is just by his faith in the in in that appropriation of that that sinlessness once and forever that is always received. It was received, and it's always received. 
and it's always permanently, eternally re received by the recipient. So that recipient can fall into the flesh and by confession and faith and um, turning in away and leaving that behind, that flesh behind, or, or, or growing away from that pattern in the flesh with the spirit in sanctification is just. It's justified through faith and they're justified through the daily sanctification of their walk. And, the, and, and God is just to forgive them because he's already forgiven them in the first. Um, he loved us because uh, we love him because he loved us first. Because we received the forgiveness at the first through faith. And hereby we do know that we keep him if we keep his commandments. What's his commandment? Well, it's to believe. And I'll, I'll, I'll get to that verse next. By trusting in that faith, receiving the grace, that we put that uh, trusted and believed it through faith and received that grace. He that so I know him and keeps not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. So if you're not a believer in Jesus and you have that, you've been born again through that faith, and then you don't live as though you've been born again and you're not confessing your sins, you're not saying I'm a sinner, and you're not doing all the ordinances, the breaking of bread, the staying separate from the world, preaching the gospel, testifying of Jesus Christ and warning the world, well then you're not a believer, you're a liar. Or you're, you're transgressing and you've fallen into sin. Or you, you've been yoked to unbelief. So you would, you would need to do a bout turn and restore yourself and be restored to your first faith. Or if you've not saved, you need to be restored to salvation in the you've got to look to the cross you've got to come to the end of your self and go i'm a sinner and you've got to look to the remedy and believe and then you by believing you receive you become the lord is faithful to answer that um that that heart and mind uh placed and looking towards him and uh, and studying and that person will be brought to the throne of grace and they will appropriate the atonement and they will know God and they will continue to know God on a daily basis and they will continue to put their faith in the Lord as they did at the first daily until they are looking at the Lord face to face in eternity, for eternity. Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, no new commandment other than to believe in Jesus but an old commandment which he had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which ye have, which is Christ, is the word to believe in Christ from the beginning, which ye have heard from the beginning. And again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in him and in you. Because you believe, now you have the fellowship with the Father, with the Son, with the Lord, and with the Holy Spirit. So you have three members of the, of the triune God in, now indwelling in you, which thing is in him and in you, because the darkness is past, because your unbelief is now belief, your darkness is now light, and the true light now shineth in you. It's always shined, now it's shining in you, the believer. He that saith he is, is in the light, and hateth his brother, because how can you hate your brother if you've been saved, you've been forgiven of all your sins? Why aren't you going to forgive all your brother, or any wicked man, even your enemy, if he keeps hitting you? He's, you, you, you still got to forgive them, but you can still put them right, and then you can separate yourself from them, putting yourself in a place to be offended by them. You don't, you don't put yourself in a place to be offended and not speak out against it. You speak out against it. If it doesn't stop, you move out of the way. But you still forgive those people. You still have a heart for those people. You don't wish the worst on those people. You want all all men to be saved, your enemies included. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light. Who's his brother? Well, it's his fellow Christian. And by loving his fellow Christian, he's loving that sinner who's been saved. So he's loving both. But you don't love, you don't jump in bed with sin, sinful people and, and, and agree with them. That's not loving. And if you go out doing good works, and on top of that, and not speaking out against the bad works, that's not love. That's, that's throwing your cut pearls before swine and, and men are trampled all over you and all, the, all your good works have been used to sharpen up against the Christian church and the Lord and thrown in the toilet and then all the evil people will take all that good work from all those efforts 
won't even thank you and it lead the world into destruction. Won't no one will be around to put their hand up and say, I'm responsible for that because I didn't believe in Jesus. I didn't believe in the truth. I just went after my own, like everyone else, went all went after the whoever's leading the charge, whatever force is leading the charge without question. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whether he goeth because his darkness because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. Because that their unbelief, they don't know the light, they don't know any different, they don't know they're dead, they don't know the purpose of life and creation, therefore they just follow what they know, and they follow after those who lead the world, and they look up to world, leaders of the world, and they're respecters of people, because we live in a, a statecraft, state, um, an unjust state-governed power, world power, which world power affects all, all nation-state powers, so there's this co uh, compromise and injustice and equality and, we're, and we've lost the, the law and the and e equity and temperance of the law in society because of the, the lawful body are unlawful, they're lawless. I write unto you fathers because you have known me, that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. This is talking to believers in Christ. I write unto you little children because you have known the Father. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning, is Christ. I have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you because they know Christ. And you have overcome the wicked one who is the devil, who is Satan, who is the power of this world and, and throughout the mankind is unbelief in God, unbelief in Satan and un unbelief in denial of its own deceptive nature and deception. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So if you go after vain glory and put in the world rights or get in your feather in your cap, you're not of the Father, you don't love the Father. You've either f forgotten your first love and fallen foul or you, you never believed in the first place and you're just going after the world like the world is lost leading the world in the blind into the ditch. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, you know, I want to be the one, I want to have it all, I want, I want that. How come they got it and I haven't? How come the world's set up like that? How come I want to be a pop star, I want to be a famous cricketer, I want to be the world leader, I want to put, I want to get all my ideas done, I want to turn, I want to fly my car, it ain't fair. And the pride of life is not the father but it's of the world because it's unjust, because it's a Satan, and there can only be one. There can only be one winner, you know, and you're not it, so don't bother going for the carrot, because it's the pride of life. It's not of God, it's not of good, it's not of right, it's not of love. It's of, it's of the lever, and it's of self. Selfishness, pride, and it will, it won't, it's nobody's friend. It'll take the whole world over the edge of the cliff, It'll get the whole swimming bath to crawl out onto the end of the, the diving board and break it, telling, telling it that's the right way to go. That's the way you, do, you dive into the swimming pool. One goes out there and everyone follows. Then you get all over the point where it can't take the weight and then it snaps. That's the world's philosophy. The world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abide forever. He who does the truth... He who trusts life will live forever because they know God and they'll be grafted into that eternal nature and that eternal nature will sustain that soul forever because God can't deny himself and he's not a liar. So all those who haven't got God will, will, won't have that, that uh, gracious sustaining but they will, they will exist forever without that. Little children, it's not the last time, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there are many Antichrists, whereby we know that it's the last time. Because Christ was uh, rejected, because the truth and the simplicity of right and wrong was rejected, the whole world develops into this Antichrist body. That's what Antichrist means. It means instead of Christ. Anyone who's got a better idea than Christ, whose truth is better than Christ, whose goodness is... Is their own goodness, and it's not of Christ, it's not of God, or Antichrist. And they robbed the goodies and kicked Jesus out, throw the baby out of the bath water, and claim that they know it, but they won't tell you where they got it from. They'll just take the prize and take the glory. 
They rob people, spy on people, get all their ideas and, and go out and sell them and patent them and win the Nobel Peace Prize. They even allow people to take a Nobel Peace Prize and they're, they're nickel the goodies after allowing that person to uh, come out and reveal all their, their knowledge and that knowledge will be stolen and used for the wrong reason that that person wanted, intended it for in the first place. They went out from us but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no, no doubt continue with us. That's talking about people who profess to be Christ, go out into the world, and then and then they don't do anything for Christ. They, they're doing it all for the world and themselves in the name of Christ. That's the Roman Catholics, that's the churches together. Anything to do with that that isn't doing what the Word of God teaches that the, a believer should be doing, and, um, and the fruits in a believer that would be doing it if they'd really received that spirit which they would be doing. But ye have an unction from the Holy One. You have, you have the truth, you have the Spirit of God from God and you know all things. You don't know all things all at once but you know God knows all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth but because you know it and that, that, that no lie is of the truth. Right? No one can argue that. Oh, you can argue it doesn't come from Jesus but no one will argue that no lie is of the truth. Well, that's obvious, isn't it? Well, is it? Well, it's not obvious to you when you're told it and you can't see it. But when you're told it, you can't, you can't tell anybody where it come from. It shuts you up. But you can say, oh, yeah, but we all know that. Yeah, but who told you? Who told you you're a liar? Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Well, who told you that Jesus... Who told you that you were a liar? Well, it was a lie, wasn't it? It was the truth. Somebody who wasn't a liar, somebody who was holy, revealed and made an open show of all that was unholy and untrue and unright and unlawful because he was lawful and right and the truth and the light and of God. And he's a faithful witness. He's a lawful witness. But, are, but is he going to get in court? No. Is the truth going to get in court? No. Why? Because it's unlawful. Because it's unjust. It's out of the way. Who is a liar that he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? Now, you, they may profess G, believing in Jesus, but is that professing he's the Messiah and he's the truth? Well, they won't profess it if they're not doing it, are they? So they're just they just brush the name out the side of their mouth. Pfft, Jesus, religion. We believe, we go to church. Yeah, but you don't do the work, so do you? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So anyone who's not a doesn't believe in the in the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit of one God, three persons, one God. God the Father, God the Son, the Word, and God the Holy Spirit, one God. Three in one, one in three, one God in Christ Jesus. Anyone that doesn't believe that, professes to know God, professes to believe God, but denies that, is Antichrist. So that's the Catholic Church. They pro might profess to, to believe that, but they don't do the works. 2 Corinthians 2.6, uh, John 18, they don't do the works of a Christian. They, they, they deny Christ. They're liars. Because they're of the world, they're not of they're not of the they're not of the Christian body. They're of the world, claiming that they are the Christian body, uh, body with the authority over the Christian body and the world. He's a liar. He's a, he's antichrist, false prophet, and he's a, he holds the the seat of the antichrist. No, he's he's a main antagonist and reason why all these nations are unjust and yoked to the lawless nation of Vatican City and he's corrupted all the world powers and they are the seat of the Antichrist that's where the Antichrist seats that's where Satan's throne is the head power of the world that would be kings rulers that would probably be the British throne or the or or the or or, or Jerusalem's throne one of the two that's and, and then the prof, false prophet will be the Catholic Church, Vatican City, and all, all the Christian body behind it. Oh, this is the Messiah, come through that line.
coming through. That's what I've been set up for. That's what they've been robbing me and all people like me. They're looking out for this Antichrist and they're looking out for closing down anyone who speaks truly against their methods of doing things. Denying the word, looking for their, their Messiah rather than accepting the one who's been testified of time and time again. So these are Antichrists. Whoso denieth the Son, saint, uh, the same have not the Father. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same have not the Father. But the Catholic Church denieth the Son. How can you say that? He's a Christian. Well, no, because he claims that there's no salvation outside of himself. As the head of that authority for Christ. Now, if he accepted Christ, he would believe the scriptures. It quite clearly said... I've already read the scripture, there's no advocate other than Christ. And Christ test the whole every book, every every testament, every prophecy prophesies the same thing, that there's only one. And it isn't the Catholic Church. It isn't that's a private interpretation of what the scriptures says. The scriptures are public for individuals. There's one God, one mediator, Christ Jesus. And you can't the, the, and the only way to obtain that salvation, the salvation of that person, of that man, of that God, is through Christ, not through the Pope, not through the, not going through the doors and the, the uh, turnstile, paying your money and getting your beads and your cross. That will not buy you salvation, and you will not get salvation through that head, because it's a false head. It's antichrist, and it's unlawful. It's proved by the scriptures to be illegal. It's proved by the right, the court in law in every nation that it's illegal and a farce. So why isn't it? Why isn't it convicted and condemned like it was in past? Because the world's lawless and a law unto itself. And if you're an unbeliever, you are antichrist and a, a law unto yourself. And you've got no leg to stand on when an unjust law starts persecuting you in your home starts performing genocide without even informing the world what's going on because it deems it right it deems it's in god's best interest for their god and them their, their great plan for god on your behalf because that's that's the way the world's set up they know better they're the elite they're the elect and anyone who's just and temperate in the middle of that you ain't gonna know those people unless you're one of them and, and the majority of people on the street aren't because they're, they're in unbelief and they're deceived and are under the yoke of this power, this force in the world. And it's, it's at a peak, ladies and gents. Let that therefore abide in you, which I've heard from the beginning. That's the gospel, just to believe in Jesus and receive it, no more, no less. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and the Father. Because once you receive that, what else are you going to believe in? And what else are you going to do on a daily basis? You're only ever going to believe. And this is a promise that he have promised us, that he have promised us, even eternal life. These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received, the Holy Spirit and the fullness of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, and now the written word, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you completely. And you need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth, and is no lie. So you have that relationship through Jesus, by Jesus, advocating on your behalf, constantly, daily, by the renewing of your mind in, and f application of your faith in him on an everyday basis. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him daily, forever. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Because you'll be completely confident in yourself and abounding in that love and relationship. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is the same. Is born of God, born of him. So that's um, 1 John chapter 2. I'll have a quick look at number 3. Behold, what manner of love, Father, uh, love, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God? Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it's uh, it doesn't know Jesus. It's it's lost, like the, like all believers were before they received that uh, the truth and a testimony and a good report of 
of Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship in the Father with the Word, with the Son and, and with the Holy Spirit. Beloved, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we should be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath his hope in him pureth himself even as he is pure. So when you receive Jesus, you've got that anchor. And every time you look to that Lord, when you have, every time you look to your Saviour, you're purified and renewed and refreshed by that grace and that love that is outflowing for each and every man, woman and child. Whosoever commit, committeth sin, transgresseth also the law. Right and wrong, ladies and gentlemen. That's whether you're a Prime Minister, whether you're a King, whether you're a Queen, whether you're a grown-up adult, a mummy or a daddy or a headmaster or a head teacher or a principal, a president, whatever you are, a, a, an executive head, a supervisory head, a servant, or you're all servants on any level. Whoso, whosoever doesn't believe in Jesus Christ transgresseth also the law. Whosoever committeth sin, sin is unbelief. Sin is not having faith in the truth. If you don't have faith in the truth, who who is Christ? You're transgressing. You you're believing. You you have access to all the good, but you're denying who's that good good is. So therefore, you're you're out the way. You, you you're going around the grounds thinking you know the map and that and you've been given permission to do what you like. You've transgressed, you've gone through the gate and you've not followed the instructions, therefore you're breaking the law, whether you believe it or not. For sin is the transgression of the law. So if you're, if you're transgressing the law, it's because you're a sinner, because you don't believe in the truth, you don't believe in Jesus Christ, you don't believe in God, you don't believe in the Creator, therefore you don't believe in the law, do you, right and wrong? But you'll say you do, because you're a liar and you're deceived. But the law shows you that you're in transgression for sin because you're an unbeliever. Because the law testifies of Christ and Christ testifies of the law. But unbelievers don't want to know that so they will continue to lie. And when we have a parliament full of unbelievers, no one is in there correcting the liars. Because it only takes two. So how many, what, there's not even two in there doing the job of a believer. So if there's only Christians in there you know, uh, believe and start correcting these people. Uh, read Psalm 149. Get on your knees and read that and then go back to work in, in the morning and you'll put that house in order because your, your house would have been put in order. Whosoever abideth him sinneth not. So whoever believes in Jesus in the morning and Jesus at the end of the day, even though that they're in they're in a sinful body, but they they go daily confessing their sins when they when their feet are going to stray or when they're tempted. They're not going to turn back to their sinful life. They're going to live for they're going to go forward in faith, believing in love of thy neighbour as thyself. So they're going to be full of the Lord's grace. So they're not going to be living for sin, and they're like unlikely to sin because they're not they're not putting themselves in the way of it. So everyone who believes is living for righteousness. They're not living for sin, although the righteous sin and the unrighteous sin alike. It's what are you living for? What's your motive? And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin. Whosoever abideth him, sinneth not. So whoever so believe in Jesus is, is forgiven, justified. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him. Whoever who continues living for sin, has not seen him, neither known him. Because they haven't believed, they haven't been forgiven of their sins and fallen down in their sins and been restored to that sinlessness that they've always got and received at the beginning. But they know that they live in the flesh and the flesh is sin. But now they are restored to faith in the spirit and they don't live for sin, but they live in a fleshy body with the spirit and the flesh is sin. So that's the difference, that's the, that's the div division in, in, in the complete. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that believes and prays and carries on in confessing their sins and, and believing and doing those things in their, 
wherever they are in their walk towards righteousness to daily living in faith little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness he that believes in Jesus is righteous he that believes in Jesus and trusts Jesus is righteous and keeps his, his commandments what's the commandment? to believe in Jesus to confess your sins to pray to be thankful and to grow in the word and when you're growing in the word to go and for that, that uh, love to be realised in your life on a daily basis and, and then to go out and put that into daily practice in your life through your life which life is all graciously given you it's not something you need to put effort into to try and make it happen something the Lord will make happen within you in his own good time as you patiently approach, um, place yourself in faith daily trusting in that, that faith daily he that committeth sin is of the devil. For sins, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. So the devil doesn't know anything different. He's 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 absence of God. He's not going to he's not going to believe and confess and teach the gospel completely. He's gonna he's gonna deceive and lie. And he know so he he's going to put that into everybody to deny God because he's the absence of God. So when people don't believe in God, they become subject to the de devil, that power, that force. And that everybody was born subject to that power with sin. And that sin is uh, born into our DNA and our children grow up with that in a sinful world, sinning in unbelief. Because they don't, they don't know God. Because of the fall of mankind, so everybody's born into sin. Even innocent little children sin and they lose that innocence and they become sinners and they are lost and they're the children of the devil or their father's the devil or their main focus is the absence of goodness and righteousness because they go after their own nature, their own belief, their own God who's the devil and who's a liar from the beginning he's a, he, he'll deceive you to tell you that you know better, you're right and there's no, that, that the law's wrong that the law, that the, the, those in the law who do right, do good by the law, are evil and it's a conspiracy and they're wicked and therefore uh, it's good to rebel. It's that old lie on the devil, he plays on both sides of the fence and he, he hits one hand against the other. Both of them hit the law and both of them hit what's good and true. And anyone in that law, families, innocent children, vulnerable people, government politicians, government heads, royal heads, if they're lawful, they get punched in the face and it's a knockout. Go back to the 70s and watch that programme, it's a knockout. That is a, um, a type and shadow of British politics and the leaven in the public body. It's a knockout. Go and watch it, go and look it up. It's funny, inconvenient, how you've not, you don't have little flashes of that show. You know, they try to bury that show in the archives of history. You never see repeats of it's a knockout, do you? No, because they don't want that sort of spirit and heart, because that's, that's Israel. That's the spirit and heart in Israel getting stamped out by the Catholic Church. You know, that's the heart and spirit of the foundational fruits of Christianity in this nation, in the stick of Joseph, in the new and ever everlasting authorised covenant of the British Empire, of Great Britain, of the law established. Not to be above everybody, but to serve everybody lawfully and righteously as the Old Testament law, the, the stick of Judah. So we have the complete stick in the, in the Holy Bible. Judah, Joseph. Who's Joseph? Christ. Christ, Judah. Who's Judah? Well, he, he, he's the head of the, the firstborn son, the heir. So he's the heir of Joseph, the head, the father. Isaac's the seed, Jacob's the seed, Abraham's the seed, God's the seed. Complete. One book. One stick. One people. One nation. Christian Jew. Christian believers. Born again. Old Testament saints. Ungrafted. Need to be born again. Need to be baptised. Need to believe in Jesus. Need to put their trust and faith alone. In he alone, the one alone. Is Christ Jesus, the man. Who, who's God in the flesh? He's a son and son of God, complete, complete with the Father, complete with the Almighty, complete with the Creator, 
and the Saviour, complete with the Father, saving all the men by his Son, by his Word, by his grace and by his Spirit and by his Holy Book, his Word. There it all is. Right, let's go to, let's finish this. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that love not his brother, they're liars and un unlawful and deceived. But this is the message that ye have heard from the beginning. Forever, it's always been the same truth, the same law, right's always been right, from, you know, it's always been right. The, the ruler's always been a ruler, even before there weren't rulers, the principles of that ruler existed. It's just had to wait for man to catch up with the rule of God, you see. And God had to help man unto himself, like a, a child and parent has to help the baby unto the breast, unto life, and it has to nurture it up to grow. It's like God with man. Not as, uh, for this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, jealous covetousness, didn't like it, you know, measured, uh, oh, that ain't fair, look at me, I'm a loser, oh, I'm better than him, therefore I'm going to destroy him to make myself feel better, slew his brother and therefore slew he him, because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous, so he shot himself, killed his brother, typical spoilt brat, when their toys are broken, see somebody with a nice toy, they go and stamp on it and break it and justify himself, oh, because somebody broke my toys, well, they break their own toys, that's passed on generationally, and children grow up with that, with that locked into their lives, and they never get off the ground, because they've grown up with that selfish nature of Cain, measuring who's got more than me, who's better than me, and that's, un, that's the leaven, that's the X factor, that's all the world today, leaven, leavened, leavened up, unjust, sharpened, stuck up, stuck up, you know, pushed up, raised up in its own image, its own importance. Uh, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren, and that love not his brother abideth in death. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death in unbelief. So we love the, we love, we love the Lord, we love the apostles, we love the saints, and we love everyone that believes because they're brothers and sisters, we're brethren. He that loveth not a person, his brother, the brethren, abideth in death, in unbelief. So if you're a Christian and you, you go into the, Christ, the, the false Christian world, they don't love you. They're, they're sharp and they stab you in the back and they won't treat you like a brother. They treat the world as their own and they treat you like an, the enemy of Christ. And they won't, they won't listen to scripture, they won't listen to testimony. And you, you just have to avoid these people and separate from people like that. And warn them. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loved not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hated this brother is a murderer. Because he denies him the gospel and the truth. And he's a liar. And you know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. So anyone who, who, who denies Christ is a murderer because they're, they're not going to be able to help them. So they're, they'll either be biased or prejudiced in their judgment. And those people world over get unjudgment treatments against that person because the whole weight of the world will be biasedly against that which is true. Which is the truth. That's why Christians are hated because they hold to the truth and speak out against the majority that is wrong. And they're persecuted for it, like Christ was murdered for it. Hereby perceive we we the love of God, because he, he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Give up our lives completely for one another, for service, for, for God's heart, mind and will, for his name's sake. But whosoever have, have this world's good, and see if his brother have need, and shut up of his bowels of compassion at home, how do I lift the love of God in him? So that you look at the contrast of the world, people claiming to be Christians like the Pope, but they shut up their need, like like children, victims of paedophiles and their family. Where's their need? Where, what about all the crimes? What about the Magdalene laundries? What about all the paedophiles and the murders and all the generations of people that are suffering today 
because they've had that yoke of that church all over their lives, stamping all over it, and still stamping all over it, continually, generationally, passing on that stamping to the one generation to the another, to stamp on one generation from the next. So it's all because people are in unbelief, they support the lie over the truth, and then they become the head, the tail catches up with the head, and the head catches up with the tail, and then it realises what it is, it's one big lump of denial and destruction, it's one big maggot, and it's going to eat its way through this earth and everything that's good. Uh, my little children, let us love in word, neither... Uh, my little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For in our heart, con for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. So, we so if we are in the wrong, God is greater to correct us, and bring us into line, because right? he knows all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence with, with God. So if we got peace... And we're growing and we're blessed and we're sustain the Lord's sustaining us in that walk. We grow in confidence, but when we're when we're against ourselves and kicking against it, then we know that we're we've not got that confidence and we can what we're doing is condemning our it is convicting us that we're going the wrong way, we're transgressing and it's condemning us. So is that's clearly revealed in that, that very short verse. And whosoever we and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. Because we've got that relationship, we're going to ask for the right things, and we're going to put all our petitions upon the Father and our, our Lord to to stay in that relationship and build on that relationship and asking, and and then the Lord will speak to to that that uh, through that relationship, through the advocacy of Christ, through the mediation of Christ by the Holy Spirit and breathe that into that person's heart, mind and spirit and they will grow in confidence and that relationship will flourish and this is his commandment so this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ because the only way to please God is to believe in Jesus and to believe that only Jesus is good and righteous and that we can't please God we can only please God by being in line with his work, because his work's what pleases him, because it's his work that pleases him to, for his own glory's sake, his own name's sake. So the only way to please God is if we're in line with believing in Jesus, accepting we're forgiven, we're not worthy of our that love we receive, to rest in that love and go and share it with the world each day in our probations, in our lives. For we are uh, ye, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because oh, I've jumped to chapter. Let me read that anyway. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. So re yeah, read chapter four on. I'm going to finish off chapter three. And He that keepeth His commandments dwelleth in Him, and He in Him. And hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He hath given us. So. Trusting in receiving Jesus at the first, believing in Jesus on a daily basis, will keep that 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 spirit will will continually abound in the believer's life, and that spirit will bear witness and comfort and abound in the believer. If the believer falls away, they will lose that fellowship, and they will get darkened. They will get um, tangled. They will they take their eye off it and lose sight of that sustaining grace of the Lord. And to get that back, they have you have to confess, realise you're out of the way, and the Lord will then restore the believer back to the grace and fellowship. And that experience will, will abound more. Well, and then the believer will become to a point where they will never fall. They will never fall, not because they can't fall, but it's because they've fallen so many times that they're unlikely to fall and want to fall, so they're not going to fall because they're, they've learned all those gracious lessons to keep them in the way and tight, 
So that's the fullness of the believer when they reach that point. That's the point I'm aiming for to reach. That's the point, that's what Paul was aiming for, but Paul reached it at the beginning and lived had to live it along the road. Whereas we're aiming for that and we've received it like Paul at the beginning and our, and that will be realised at the end in Christ. Whether and whether we champion all of the flesh in this life or not, we've received it at the first and we grow in it daily towards that end. Everybody's different and everyone grows at um different speeds. Right, I'm just going to complete uh, complete off the scriptures I'd, I'd lined. So that was um, 1 John 3, 1 John 2, 2 Corinthians 13, and now I'm going to end with James 5. Now, now comparison to the, the professing Christian in the world, and all those who claim to live, law, to live for the law. Remember that scripture, he who's against the law is a sinner and a liar, and anti-Christ, anti-good, anti-righteousness, anti-law that they claim to serve. Right, James 5. Go to now, you rich men, weep and howl for you mis your miseries that shall come upon you because of your lies. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. All your lies are going to come to that. Your rich, all your, all your wealth and good status is on the back of rottenness and corruption and your garments are moth-eaten your gold and silver is cankered that means it's peppered with holes and bites and like worm holes and decay and the rest of them that have a witness against you so you've been testified so many thousands of times it's gone rusty because it's just weathered Weather, people have been telling you you just allowed yourself to become a bit of rust and denied that rust, oh, I'm not rusty, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. The countless testimonies will be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. So once you've done it, it's going to convict you, and it's going to eat you like fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. That's coming, that's today. These days, today, we're in those days, approaching those days. The fulfilling of those days. Behold, the hire of the labourers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. Behold, the hire of the labourers, the sponsoring of corruption and unlawfulness of other world powers, of other ideas, of other following unlawfully, going with policies that are unlawful, that you know are unlawful because you've got the rust of witnesses against you and your unlawfulness, you have the word of God against your unlawfulness, crying out against you, behold the hire of the labourers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, deception and lies, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped and entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. So all the people under the way have cried against them, of them which have gone into the ears of, of God and the cries of them which have reaped who've suffered it they've reaped they've suffered the consequences of this fatness and lies and fraud from the law breakers cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath so all the pleading has gone into the ears gone into the ears of the Lord alone not the ears of those overseers and lawful uh, servants of, of, of the lawful, of the lawful citizen who's got just as much right and equality as these so-called leaders who like to lord it over you and think that they can make decisions about your life without you having to a legal say-so. You've got to chase up solicitors to fight the unlawfulness of an unlawful system. And when you go and look for that lawful help, it's all against you. It all ties in, oh no, you've got to go along with what they say. Well, that's unlawful, and you're asking me to follow the law unlawfully. You're, you're just as bad. So you end up not being able to get any lawful help. You've got to go and get it yourself. Well, i got the Word of God, so I've got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I've got the Jews, I've got my own testimony, I've got the Christians. I've got a testimony of both. I've got the lawful book, lawful witnesses. And, and, and with my witness, I can turn over all these criminals.
But will they hear it? No, they won't. They just walk all over you. Well, they can't walk over me because I'm in Christ and he's a rock. So the rock will plough through these people and judgment, because of the two-edged sword, the truth, will cut right through it. Behold, the horror of labourers who have reaped down your field, which is kept back for fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath, Sabbath the Lord of rest in heavenly places, in Zion, in, in the Father, in heaven, in his glory, on his throne, that's the Lord of Sabbath, the Lord of heaven. Ye have lived in pleasure on earth and been wanton. You've been fat and you've gone all whoring out. You've gone all out. Pull all stops is wantonness. Ye have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. So in, in the day of slaughter, when all the judgment reaches its point and it consumes all that it's after, that's, how, that's an equivalent antithesis of what, how people have behaved with fraud and, and allowing the public bo body to suffer. They've been wanton at it. And, and Christ has told this 2,000 years ago of what, what's happening uh, past, present and future then in man and past, present and future today in the same man and heart. No matter what man says, there's no change. Read uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. All is vanity. All under the sun is vanity and vexation of goodness and the truth and what's right and love and what's good for all families and people, all men, all wicked people, all lawful people. It's right for everybody. But it, it, it's the world's been wantonly against it, partying and rebelling. The... the, the the under the noses of the royal uh, lawful authority that are commissioned to serve that. So whether even if that house goes wild, the law, the the authority within that law is is to sustain the law and to serve the the sovereign head of that law, who's God, who's Christ. And if you're in Israel, it, w it would be Jehovah and King David's law, the Word. The law, of, the rule of law, not man. They don't uh, wouldn't put themselves on the throne. They would put that law on the throne to govern themselves lawfully, as we do in our country. But if 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 the if all the houses are wild and wanton, well then all the public body are going to be wanton, and all the civil service is going to be wanton and unjust. As in the days of slaughter, so the days of slaughter will come as a consequence of this wantonness. Ye have condemned and killed the just. That's the innocent. Like I was an innocent child. Crushed. Never got a chance to grow up. And continually crushed on a daily basis up until this day. Right, that's the reality of my life. Whether you believe it or not, I don't, I don't care. I know, what, I know right and wrong. And I know what I've ex lawfully experienced. I was a minor. Uh, unlawfully treated. Not only by the law. My own family. But then every everyone in society unjustly and left to left to be that all my responsibility. Well, I I was the innocent and unlawfully slapped, and then and then they stick they stick the guilt on me, and then lie about it to cover up their own lies. You have condemned and killed the just. I've seen people walked over and stamped out of life lawfully, and it been written up as okay. And I've qualified. To, to, I've been on both sides of the fence and I've heard professionals all say cover your own backsides because the pressure's coming down on us let's put it down on the public none of them stand up against the unlawfulness of it and pass it back because they're too frightened because of the status quo of the mass of lies and unlawful wantonness toes everyone into line so they're too spineless and they compromise that's why they don't lose their jobs that's why they're still working. That's why they're still employed. That's why they're still getting voted for. That's why they're still being held up in this wanton unlawfulness. And we've got these paedophile popes repeating the same old rhetoric. Oh, we won't do that again. Oh, Blessed Mary will be ashamed. Well, but Blessed Mary was a sinner. And she ain't even care about this. And if she was here, 
she would be ashamed that you've rejected Jesus Christ and put her at the front of responsibility to keep washing your dirt on the Blessed Mary. The Blessed Mary is a sinful woman who rejected her Messiah and had to repent and then she believed and, and received. So don't, so don't uh, put Mary in some holy light. Christ is the holy, only holy one. Read your own Bible. There is none righteous, no, not one. Not even Mary. Not even, not e not even anybody. Not even Pope Peter. He wasn't even a pope. He was just a, a wicked, sinful believer who was made whole. But he was a blessed believer because he was a Jew. But he 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 fell away from his Jewishness and got corrupted by the, the Gentile world. So he was a sinner. He was a sinner because he's in unbelief. He was out, out of the tree of his Jewishness and righteousness. So that righteousness came and saved him. So he isn't the head of the church, he isn't the main authority. Christ is the head. Read your Bible, read Colossians, read Ephesians, read Galatians, read Acts and read Colossians. Read all the book, read the prophets. There's only one head, and that's Christ. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. So the Lord's waiting to harvest his souls. And he's saying, be patient in these times. Don't worry, I'm driving, says the Lord. Behold, the husband, husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. So he, he's waiting to save Jew and Gentile alike from amongst all this wanton injustice. Even those people who are like the Pope, he could be saved today. He could have a, a change of heart and come out of that church. The church is not going to change. The world is not going to change itself. It's up to those individuals to, to believe in Jesus and be saved. And, the, and, and for that individual to be changed. You're not going to change these worldly systems overnight. But you'll change them if you allow yourself to be changed. Because they will, they will filter out. And then there'll be what's in its place will be uh, established and strengthened. And what 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 is in error will dis disperse and lose its strength. And what what is um, weak that had truth in it will be strengthened by the truth that's remained, that's received the truth, that will strengthen that which remains that was in error partly. The husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. So the Lord's harvesting. So. He, it will be all the way through from Acts. From the Old Testament, the early, and then the early part of the New Testament, the early part of the Old Testament, and the latter part of the Old Testament, then the early part of the, the crying in the wilderness, then the latter part of the Gospel of the Lord's ministry, then the early part of the New Testament in Acts, going on to the rest of the world, then the latter rain, and then the early rain before the tribulation, and the latter rain at the end of that dispensation, then the latter rain in, in, in the deliverance of Israel, the branch, from the wrath, and the, and the seed of the Gentiles that believe in that period. That's the gleanings, that's the last, the last little gleanings. But the, the main early and latter rain are before the great tribulation. The fruit of the earth, taking up the Lord taking up his jewels. He's going to take them up before the wrath. And it'll only be out of that part, the part that is, that is buried in the ground, that the Lord's hid there. And that will be the conviction of the rest of the world who, who believe the lie. And they think that they're the ones and they're the salt and they're the holy. No, they're the leaven and they're about to be burnt in a crisp in the oven and they can't get out. You know, and I'm not saying all of them, but because the Lord may, because the Lord, you know, they may repent. But if they take the mark, they're not. They're the people that are condemned, and they won't get, ever get out of it once they receive that mark. They've re they've willfully rejected Christ and accepting His judgment because they rejected Him before the the cut off point, which which was two and a half years before that, or whenever. At the um. Uh, before the Jacob's trouble, when he he raptured the church, or when he will to come rapture the church, which, which will be from that point, looking back, and where, when the church would have been raptured, and then the, the the outpouring of wrath, the day of wrath, or the seven years of wrath, the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble, 
the unfolding of that rough in that seven year period you know the it getting worse and worse and then the outpouring of, of, of it all finally at the last half and the last quarter to the deliverance of Israel and, and the uh, the death of all the Gentile believers who 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 had their heads cut off or died for their faith died for their belief they've died they've died a death in death and their death is you know they, he who lose their life shall find it. Who shall find their life shall lose it. It's a, it's, it's a perfect nutshell of that episode. He who goes into judgment and, and doesn't accept the mark will be saved. He who goes into that period and accepts the mark will be judged. Now, every everyone who is in that goes into that period has already been judged before they go into it. So, anyone goes into that period already had an opportunity. It's finally, it's too late. They've already been judged. It's only the period in that body of people, the fire and the flames and the kindling and all the wood, there's only going to be one little gold nugget in that, at the bottom of the fire that's going to come out and that's going to be the refiner's fire, the fuller's sake and that, and that will be Israel. So if you think you're Israel today, you need to be grafted into Christ, don't wait for that period because you, you, you're not the one who's going through it. So if you say in your heart, I'm Israel today, therefore I reject Christ and then you go into the period, he's going to say, well, too late mate you you were Israel but you've rejected me and now, now you're condemned and you've lost your inheritance and you're going to hell and then you'll look at the Old Testament and you realise there is a hell and there was for the Old Testament saints who didn't believe and they were kicked out in the wilderness and they didn't enter into the promise and and you won't be entering into that promise either if you're, if you're a Jew if you're of Judah and of Israel any of the seed today and you reject Jesus Christ you will not be grafted back in and you will not be part of Israel because part of Israel believes and they believe in the one who gave them the, their inheritance who's Christ and Christ and, and the whole seed of Israel are Christ's inheritance they're his people and they're King David's people through Christ for him on his stead and that's why Christ put that King David on the throne not to rule over them, but to be a servant of all in Christ's stead until Christ came back in the millennium. After the judgment, after the, the world kingdoms have failed and after Israel and Judah have been restored before the great tribulation and outpouring of wrath. To be, to be baptised, to be born again in Christ, to know the Lamb and delivered from this wrath to come. And then there'll be a legacy for that, that branch in that day. To, you know, to have a hope, because the time's going to be made short. But you need to study the scriptures and, and trust the word and trust in God and measure everything carefully with, with not just one, not just with one opinion, not just with what I say, but with what many approved people say or many unapproved. You've got to measure and trust in God and his word and then look at all that's being said and measure to see if it is in line with his word or not. So you've got to check, even things that you learn yourself, you've got to recheck and reevaluate. So I can only caution people to make sure you test by the word. Don't just assume that I sound like I know what I'm talking about because the devil knows what he's talking about. And I'm, what I'm saying is don't follow me, but just follow who I'm following after. Even if I'm following after in a mistake, I, I'm confident that the Lord will correct me. But if you're following me and I'm, and I'm a, unaware of that, I'm going to be leading a lot of people into an error. So I want to deal with that before that happens and, and, and just make sure people are trusting in the Holy Word and the Scriptures and the Lord first, above, above my opinions and above what I share. And just listen to the spirit, trust in the spirit of the word and the word in that spirit. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So whether that's that's the day of Christ or the day of the Lord after the judgment, or whether you're delivered from that period and the wrath to come, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. So if you read book James 5 when you're in the tribulation, it will apply to you in the second coming. If you're reading James 5 today, it's going to apply to you in the, the removal of the church and the, the outpouring of that God's wrath and he delivers his people in, 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 into safety, which is a heavenly place with him. 
and then then he restored them back to earth in the you know when when the judgment's been poured out and he he returns to be king and lord king of kings and lord of all lords king of hosts and lord of all hosts in god's stead on his throne as it as god rules in heaven he will rule in heaven and on earth in christ and david will be in his stead with him ruling with him and his people will be uh, under the king king david and under christ the king the sovereign head of king david king david's king and lord israel's lord king david and, and, and king david's with those people and christ is our lord king david's lord and King David is Lord of Israel and Judah. You know, all the, all the seed, all the people, the whole lot. He was king for all of them to keep them together because, you know, the Lord wanted each, each seed to know God personally. And that's why he chose David after, because he knew Saul would fail, you see. And he knew David would fail. But with the two, with all the kings, the Lord could show his heart through David. And Solomon, how he, he had a heart for all men, at least first. And that's the heart of David, because that's the heart of Christ, and that's the heart of Joseph. And that's the heart of all the seed of Israel, if they're grafted into the, into, the, into the head, Judah, and into the heart, Joseph, and Benjamin, and, and Jacob, and Isaac, and Abraham. All their hearts are to their fathers, who, who's the father, God. Be you also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draw from I. So be patient, establish your hearts, just grow in daily and rejoice in that. Philippians 4.4, 4, re don't forget to rejoice. Uh, Hebrews 4, make sure you've entered into that rest, into that relationship with Christ and you can go day by day in that, that joy and that renewing and that confessing of your sins and walking in that fellowship. Be patient. I wasn't patient, I was impulsive and a terrible, terrible, wound up, coiled up, angry sinner, just, you know, thrashing around. It took me a long time to settle and be established. So you, you've you got to take all things into consideration, your own personal circumstances, not compared with other people. You might be up and running within a week, you might be struggling. But the more, if you just stop and listen and trust, it, the, the quicker the Lord will be able to work through you. But if you start, those emotions and those wound, those things wound up in your life, or those wounds will overtake you and take you away from your first faith, and that will give Satan power over your benefit in your circumstances. So you you, you won't grow so you be more detrimental to your health and heart and spirit and testimony. And if you were just to trust in the Lord, and if you got all this baggage with you, like you, you need to deal with that in the closet. In, in, you need to be sick. If you got a hangover, you need to wait until it's out of the way and you're clean and you, you've rebuilt up your health and your water level and your all your nutrients and your protein and you've built up yourself and given your body a chance to recover from putting your your sensitive organs through that paces and strain. So you think of a whole sinful life, how long it's going to, however long you've been sinning, it's going to take you a while to settle in that first faith. So the Lord wants you to stop, put a pause on life, put a pause on doing anything, and allow him to concentrate in your walk and to establish you. And you've got to be patient and trust the Lord. Uh, waited for the pre for precious fruits of the earth and have long patience for it until he received the early light of rain. Be also patient, establish your hearts, allow your hearts to be established. For the coming of the Lord draw from I. Grudge not ye one another against one another, brethren. Don't be fleshy, don't be a leaven, be unleavened, be, be meek and um, add to your patience, uh, temperance and soberness and, and long suffering and, and that grace will abound in your life. Grudge not one against another, don't measure unjustly measuring the love of God lest ye be condemned behold the judge standeth before the door so all things are in the presence of uh, of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and he, he, he's in the door he is coming back he will come back 
Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord, for an example of suffering, affliction and patience. So exactly that. Look at how patient and long-suffering Christ is. In, because Christ is, you know, we say, "Oh, come, come, Lord Jesus." We want, we we want to, we all want to rejoice and be standing when the Lord returns, and walking in that joy. And we want to be. We don't want to be up the front winning. We want other people to be up the front, coming unto the Lord and and knowing. Sitting in the basement, we're not. No, you're not after. The, you're not keen to be the sole prize winner because we've we've received the prize. We want everyone else to receive it. So you're you're more reserved back. You're decreased, decreased that the Lord may increase. Begin as the Lord's been increasing your walk, and you've received a, a bigger portion. You 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 step back and you're happy for your focus to be towards others rather than the focus being solely on your own need and you've been blinkered by what the Lord's needing to do with you and if you don't recognise that and you put your focus prematurely on service you're denying the Lord fixing you before you can go and serve and that's that was a transgression I made because I wasn't listening to what the Lord was doing with me I was trying to drive the Lord to follow the commandments but I was missing in the main one, and that was myself. To rest and be patient. Not to measure, not to compare, not to trust what other believers teach. But to grow in that relationship with the Lord daily. And be patient. Just be patient for the Lord to put me right. Behold, the husbandman waited for the... I've got that one. Be also patient, establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Drop down grudge, not one another against brethren. Another brethren, lest ye be condemned, behold the judge standeth before the door. Take my brethren the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering, affliction and patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Endure simply means um, believing it every day, resting and rejoicing in that salvation already received, that love and forgiveness of all sins every day and then sharing that with the rest of the world that's what we endure we endure the sufferings of the world we don't endure the vain works and persecutions that vex us for doing those transgressions no we endure the suffering and love of god with god because god god suffered and god suffers with the world as, as the saints suffer with the world but they also rejoice with christ and, and, and the Father because they they want because the world is also being saved and the Lord is being magnified in those he's saving so there's this drawing there's this loss and this winning at the same time there's a draw and 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 and, and the uh, salvation of people so it's that's what we patiently endure that whole process of going through it together because they're Christ's sufferings they're not our sufferings so when we're suffering and murmur, uh, feeling that pain, we're feeling that pain of Christ, those pangs of uh, Christ pangs, when we feel upset for somebody or compassion. That's the Lord's heart and mind and spirit for those people. In us, he's given us his grace. He's given us that experience. He's given us those sufferings to know what it's like. He's also given us that love with those sufferings to understand what that person is going through so you can sympathise. So you're not going to overreact, you're going to react properly. You're going to go, well, I, I, I know what that's like to suffer that. And I know exactly what that person needs because Jesus gave it to me. Because Jesus suffered that, then he was the healing for it, and then he gave me both. Now I've suffered, now I can, now I can um, do what the Lord done and free up the prisoners, bind up the weak, shore up that which is... Uh, you know the the Lord's breached in by by the testimony that has been given to me, and I can just be that testimony. And the Lord can graciously use that testimony in other peoples, and 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 they, those people will become disciples, as I've become a disciple of Christ, and, and and that will abound in other people's lives. And that's how the Lord works. He's patient until he receives the early and latter rain. Take my brethren, the prophets. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. Job. Well, look at Job's life, the complete, the complete 
plan of salvation in one man. And that complete, uh, you know, Jew, Gentile, in Christ Jesus, born again, completely in that one, one, one prophecy, in that one book, in that one life, in that one man. Done by that one heart and one mind, and one God and one word, in that one man, in that one book. One of the most incredible books of the incredible book, of all the other incredible books, of the most incredible book. And they've seen the end of the Lord. They've seen the beginning and the end and they've received it, like Job. That the Lord is very pitiful and tender of mercy and, you, and you're never going to know that unless you believe and you've received that tenderness and mercy time and time and time and time and time again when you're not worthy of it. When you, you've been saved, you're doing really well. It's like the Lord's pleased with you, but you, the Lord's not pleased. You, you're just doing the Lord's bless. You're a, you, you're just simply allowing the Lord to bless you, and then you, then you make it. Then you don't do so well, and then you're killing yourself because you like you, you failed. But the Lord is pitiful, tender mercy. He doesn't expect you to to be God. What He expects you to do is believe and experience His love. It's that simple. You don't need to try and please Him. You don't need to try and earn it. You just got to accept it, and then you got to find out where you can place that. It, but that takes patience and rest, and, and growing in the word daily, and not not beating yourself, not whipping yourself, not trying to run before you can walk, not trying to listen to what other people say about a sin you're battling with. You need to do that with your your father. You need to do that with your saviour. You're not going to fix all your problems in one go. And you're not going to understand what, what it is the Lord's fixed in one go. So you need to keep all that contained in your own life, in your own personal relationship with the Lord. And if it's a sinful one, if it's a struggle with sin, you need to keep that out of your family, out of your life. You have to discipline yourself and learn how to manage that and remove yourself from it as you outgrow it in Christ. So you've got to, you have to keep it out of the world, you've got to keep it out of your life and you've got to keep it out of the... The, the testimony of the of the church, and you and you, but you, but you're justified and sanctified to to resolve your salvation in your closet in your operating theatre in your where in where you do your ablutions where you get rid of all the dirt in your natural body. You, you know you have a sp spiritual equivalent in your closet where you confess your sins. When you talk to the Lord about something that you're trying to outgrow and you don't understand why you're still struggling with it, and the Lord might say, "Well, to keep you humble, to keep you keep coming to me and confessing your sin." And that's why I've given you it. That's why I haven't removed it completely. Because so then, then I keep you on your knees, and then you'll keep coming to me, and and then I'll keep blessing you until you, you know, until I take those stabilizers off and and we remove that for good. And that might teach other people for judging you. So, the, who you know, um, it's all about relationship in that that one relationship who atoned for all sin. He's the only one who understands. He's the physician. But above all things, my brethren, swear not. Swear not. What swear? What bad language? Or swear? Or swear on? I, I swear, God, that I'll never sin. I swear that I will do all that I can to serve God and country. Swear not, neither by heaven nor by the earth, because you're a sinner, you're the flesh, and you're a liar. Neither by any other oath, but let your nay be nay. Let your let be honest. I, I'm a liar. I will fall short, but I, I'm not, I'm not going to live to do that. But but believe me, we're all like that. So don't expect too much. But don't, but don't allow people just to sit back on that and take advantage of being knowing that they're sinners, that they can go, oh look, we can't do anything about it. But let your nay be nay and your yea be yea. So if you don't know, you don't know. And if you do know, you're convicted and confident that you know. Lest you fall into condemnation. Lest you're double-minded and then you get knocked here, there and everywhere. And you're swayed about by every philosophy and every doctrine of devils and every doctrine of men. Because you, you, you're, not be, you're, not allow, you're not being honest with yourself. You're not evaluating yourself and going, I don't know. 
Oh, I do know that. Oh, I don't know that. Oh, I haven't considered that. Oh, oh I say this, but it, it, I don't really know. But I have this little bit of knowledge I'd like to share. That, that's the a a and nay nay. If is any among you afflicted, let him pray. Is, is, is any merry, let him sing psalms. So it's all it's all done. It's all finished for every all the believer. And we we have to live in a, a sinful fallen world with an, a, a sinful body, and all our bodies are going to die. It, he, but the spirit isn't going to die, so the believer in Christ will not taste of death. Not not the sting of death, and not not the uh, going through that without the Holy Spirit and the love and knowledge of God. They will, their bodies will pass away as, as, as all life passes away as all, all life comes to an end whether you're righteous or not doesn't mean you, you uh, Christians live forever because they've got sin and sin is death and the Lord's appointed, appointed us in the world of sin the probation where we all die but we don't die in the spirit so our death in passing is sweet and it's a delight and joy to the Lord because it's the end of our is purpose for us, and we we are finally with the Lord forever, like as it as He wanted us to be. So that's when we realise that that finality of His purpose for, and His salvation, and that He's He's sovereign in God and loves us. So that will be uh, realised. So all this is just covering. Well, in the meantime, uh, is any among you afflicted? Because you know the apostles ability to resurrect the dead from life and to heal people a they 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 were dying out themselves they're getting old and frail weak losing their eyesight or all, all for the consequences of their sins finding them out you see and so the, the time of the acts and the uh, miracles of the sign gifts passed and, and then the gospel went by faith we live by faith it was preached by sight by those who had faith in that sight when it was here so they got a witness of their faith by the sight of that grace and the witness who gave, gave them the faith to receive that witness of the grace that they received through faith so although they saw the Lord, they didn't know, they had to have faith in the Lord to see him first. So it's no different in that time than it is today, but there's no miracles, there's no healing. So we have, we're have we spiritually whole and complete in Christ and that knowledge, and we can grow into that and attain that knowledge and that sealing and conviction. And But we're not going to be resurrected or, or our broken bones restored without the what we've got available to us from natural man and and the goodness of the application within the, in in the flesh towards a good end of fit, perhaps you know restoring those bones or perhaps even towards healing and it, it reaching its um where it should have been in the sustaining where it should have been right in the first place its health level in the first place so you can be restored to your peak health but you're not going to be perfected in your dna markers you're not going to be changed in that sense until you die and you're resurrected that's that's done in christ but it's not going to be realized in in our earth in our lifetimes any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. So all an elder can do, if you're sick, is pray over you. Anointing is like pour, a holy, the Holy Spirit's blessing and comfort. comfort. And So you could give a, a physical anointing to somebody who wants some comfort and pray over them with the Holy Spirit in the Spirit. And the anointing will be a toke, a physical manifestation of the, the spirit being poured over that person, the blessing. You pour a whole jug of oil over a person's head, and that's the anointing. That's how the that's how kings were set apart. The anointing is the washing over of that love, that oil, that Holy Spirit, the the lamp oil. So that 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 anointing isn't going to do nothing. It's a faith in in the believer. 
go into those elders and those elders praying for that Holy Spirit to comfort that person, make them feel better. They'll feel lifted and they will recover and that will help them in their sickness. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, see? The prayer of faith, not the prayer of sight and restoration and wholeness, but the prayer of faith shall save that person from their sickness. So that will bring them forward. So whether they've got, got a sickness or not, it will comfort them in that sickness and, and they will be healed within that sickness and safe. Faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up and he shall have committed sins, they shall be given him. So that believer, if they're, they're, they are sick, in their sickness, or sick because of their, their going sinning, the Lord will restore them back to where they were saved in the first place, or, or what they remained before they went wrong, and the Lord will forgive him. That means they will be restored to the forgiveness that they'd already received, if they committed sins after they'd believed. Confess your faults one to another, confess your faults, not your sins, and pray one for another. So confess your faults is the things you don't do, or, or, the, or talking about the, you know, the things that will cause you to sin, like uh, not doing your scriptures, or you know, uh, not omitting something, and, and by omitting something you do this, that you've got a fault in this area, a fault in that area, and these faults are what leads to sin. And, and a fault and sin, a sin is a fault, a fault is a sin. Confess your fault, faults one to another where you go wrong, and pray one for another. Admit, you know, admit you're a sinner, that's a fault. That's, that's confessing a fault, that you don't admit you're a sinner, you don't admit that you, what you've learned, that you forget to share with people. Um, and pray one for another, that you may be healed healed in the spiritual sense and kept whole, the effective fervent player of the righteous man availeth much. See, to understand the scriptures, you've got to under, under, understand the complete. Because if you just dip into this and go, well, see, you can get healed. You can be, you know, uh, there should be someone out there who can restore me to, my, you know, get me out of a wheelchair so I can be whole. Well, you've got to understand all the scriptures in the context and where where each believer is in the probation, in the, the dispensation of the gospel of grace. We're in, currently in the season of grace in the times of the Gentiles with the gospel towards the Jews and the Gentiles of, of Christ, the salvation, the free gift of salvation, forgiveness of sins by the precious Holy blood of the Lord, his death, burial and resurrection unto life. That's the probation. Now the, the probation will change when it goes over to the, the period of wrath. That's another p dispensational period. But it will be the same Lord and the same gospel, but it will be applied differently to those who have rejected it. But it will be replied exactly the same that God is ever merciful and pitiful to the people who, who are going to have an opportunity to hear it from the first time. And that's how why you need to learn to divide the word in all areas in, in application of any given time and any given period and any given perspective you're looking at along the word and in faith. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual prayer, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. So the prayer of the believer availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we. So remember First Timothy, praying for the, the kings and being thankful for all men availeth much. Um, I have a strong conviction of that for not doing it and then doing it and receiving that blessing. Not only do you realise the, uh, the other people doing that, that, that enables you to see more of your people you, you couldn't see that you thought were absent of the world and you were, you were the only one isolated in this in this sinful world when you start looking righteously you start to see in the world that all the righteous people in unbelief and then you see all the believers in unbelief and then you start to see the heart, mind and will and God in those believers and in those people in the world who don't know God and then those people in the world who don't live for righteousness so you see those people who are right, but they, they're just 
lost. They need, they need, they need, they need the gospel. You see, the people who are lost, they need the gospel, and you see the people who are, who are living rightly and lawfully, but they need the gospel because they're lost. And then you see the people with the gospel, who are trying to get the gospel out, but they're swamped and lost in 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 the sense that they're surrounded by corruption and lies and wanton injustice. And so the gospel is very difficult to get to the people you want it needs to. So that, so a fervent prayer will avail you very much if we're praying to do the things the Lord will ask us. And one of those things is to be thankful and pray and intercede for all our leaders. Because that's where the difference will be made. So that's my prayer, that the, that the Lord will abound in that area within our own personal lives towards his will. And then that will to continue on abounding further in the effectual answering of those further prayers to be realised in, in, in our in our in the good that the Lord does for us will have an effect on others and our prayers will move us on to those in those good works in, in our faith expression of faith daily praying for these things. So the Lord will work in us and then you know that then what what's done in us will have worked towards that in that prayer of that individual and all individuals towards that one end of a fervent effectual prayer working first in the believer and then in the believer to the world in other believers to, out to the world to those people in those situations that will benefit from those effectual prayers being answered by grace in their lives because they will see the fruit through the grace of God they might not necessarily see where it's come from let it come from the effectual prayer of the righteous. The fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Because God will, is faithful to grant and bless that person to go and bless other people with, with, his, with his grace and abounding. And that man will be uh, used for the, the master's use, meet for the master's use. Now that may fluctuate, but that person at that point in time will be meet uh, for the for the Lord's use and blessing to bless others, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth but the space of three years and six months, and he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her rain. Brethren, if you if any of you do err from the truth, if you stray from the truth or get caught away with errors, and one convert him. Let him know that he hath converted the sinner from the error of his way, shall save the soul from death, and shall hold him among the prolific sins. So that's twofold. If we, if your, your testimony affects anyone in the world, and they change their path, you have saved their soul, or you've been saving the Lord in working towards saving that person's soul. If you do that within the body, if, you, if, you, if your testimony corrects anyone on any level, you have been instrumental in saving that soul and delivering them from a death. And that shall hide a multiple of your sins in your own life because you're, you're nothing special. Right, so I'm going to close there for now, complete with my diagram. So this is the, the final part coming. So um, hold on to your horses and I will turn briefly. Right, this is... Um my diagram, I'm just going to start with this doodle I done, just con considering um, the uh, fake news, Facebook, fake book, I doodled this, just couldn't, to Facebook, just, just obvious, the glaring obvious of it, the shadow, the joke, the playing of the two hands by, you know, fake news, you know, that the, the, they lead the charge of the, what's fake news. But they are the face of that fakeness, the personal identity theft, the fake book, the face, the fake face, the fake book, the fake face, the two Facebook fake news liars. So I wanted to start with that. Right, here's my diagram. So I'm going to start with this is kind of like appealing to, where's my marker, the unjust judge. So, where are we? Right, can we see the whole lot? Because I've written it on the wall in pencil, it's not very clear. 
So I'm going to have to zoom in, you see it's, my walls are disgusting. Right, so we've got the, look at the scales, and we've got the tipping of the scales, we've got the, the, the consequence, because it's statecraft, it's an unjust law, so it's lawlessness. There's the, so we've got the leaven and the unleaven, looking at the comparison of the three. So this is the evidence in the world, this is just a diagram of what is real, what's reality, what is lawless. So there we have the leaven, the common law, what our nation's founded on. There we have the believer in Christ, the faithful, who's justified, and those who live lawfully in, in government that are righteous, who, who may not, not necessarily know Jesus, but they, they have trust in the law and what's good and right to their conscience, that they are lawful. So that's the law, the unleaven. The world, of all the hype and all the politics and all the lies, that's the leaven, you see. Privatisation, statecraft, and all this. Right, so let's go around and let me start in the centre. So we have faith alone in Christ, and then we have the the just scale. So that's the just balance. That's the rod, the rule of law. And then if we look at the consequence, so if we I'm going to divide. So this I'm going to have this one as the world, this one as the public body. So let's go down the weight. Who's who's causing the weight on the world? So we go down to the Pope. My little door doodle. Now I'm not saying the Pope, the man, I'm talking about what he represents. He represents Christ. But he's a fake. He, he's false. He's a false prophet. He doesn't speak for Christ according to his word and according to the law. The law of our country and the law of the word. The lawful points of the word and the lawful points of evidence show that he is not just, he's unjust. But the world denies it really obvious because it's fat in leaven in the world the flesh the hype the grandeur so that's Vatican City so that 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 nation state that power and that belief that he he is the the supreme ruler on on earth for God and for man and for all nation states is lawless he believes that he's the he should be king and he should be the head of the church, the spiritual king and the physical world king. So the prophet, now all that, that nature and history of those people are black. They are Satanists. They worship lawlessness and they knowingly and openly worship dark arts and orders and they, they linger in the basement and, and behind the powers of Vatican City. Regardless of who, who's on the throne, who's the white pope, has a black pope, has a black head, a black priesthood. These are the, these are the, 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 there's the priesthood in ignorance following the lie, following the lawless, lawless city power world power that's in bed with all the others and they're sodomites by birth because it's in their genes all these black people, all these history, these evil men behind the philosophies that hide in the face of Christianity are paedophile sodomites and they raise up this duped Christian, false Christian body of believers who, who can't think for themselves because they're lawless, they're choked and it's part of the Antichrist, the 666. So he's the false prophet, he's the false head of religion, the false head of the Jews, the false head of the Christians, the false head of every man, woman and child. He's the false prophet of what is God, what is law, what is God's heart, mind and will. And he holds the keys to the Antichrist, Satan's seat. What is Satan's seat? Well, let's go up to look at the influence of this power in Europe, with all the United Nations, in the EU, and all the unlawfulness in our country, and, and how, what he's associated to. So the fat on the seesaw holds up these 
Well powered. London. Compromised to that lawlessness. So you've got this two-faced government doing good in the name of lawlessness. We have the same in Washington, all because of Vatican cities. We've got the, the three sixes. Vatican philosophies at heart. Washington following suit, leading London and London leading Washington, following this compromise of good and evil. Doing good in the face of evil, in the face of evil, seat of the Antichrist. There's the, that, that's, the, that's the head, that's the seat and power of the Antichrist throne. It's world leadership, president, king, Probably, probably a king of one of those nations, perhaps uh, Jerusalem or or uh, Saudi Arabia, somewhere like that. But he will be a, a world power because of these fat powers, because of the Vatican and the unbelief in G the truth, Jesus, on that focus. Remember, I told you to focus and see who's who's, who's unlawful. Remember the scriptures. That they don't believe the law, the liars, and how that they're wanton in their lusts, and they they tread on every innocent people, every every good person that they squash under the weight of this injustice, and this holds up. This is statecraft, and those films I showed you, at the beginning, those are state-sponsored privatisation in bed with these unlawful people. Now let's have a look at the effects of this in the world. So you've got this injustice. So you got you got the oppressed at one end, the society, and then you get the other body it's already easy for. So you get some people get a good service, some people get the weight, and you get all this lies. So we look in government, you've got these uh, uh, state-run liars and criminals because they're supporting Vatican they're supporting lawlessness they're not supporting our law and what's right because if they were we wouldn't have this we wouldn't have that in the world would we would have fairness and equality and equity but we don't we get the lies all the time because we get all the state statecraft we get they, they think that they know better from us therefore that we get this hierarchy rank and file we know better, you do as you're told, therefore you would, you can't think for yourself because you've got to do what I tell you to do. So the, all the responsibilities put on them, when they're on the ground, they're not around, so they've got to do what they've been told to do because there's nobody around, nobody cares. They, they, then it goes down the line and it's the blind obedience to the content martialised education system and the state running of people because they're unjust. They can't judge and make just laws and measurements because they're serving lawlessness and that which is unjust. And the evidence of the fruit of this behaviour, of these lawless people drinking water out the cistern, out the sewer, because they're in bed with the EU and all the corporate powers that make this fat lump fatter and this fat lump holds up all these state-run, state-craft, blimmin' private investors. Privatisation of public services is all because of that fat power, that lie, against our law. Our queen, our country, and our queen, our nation, and our government, and the uneven in our country. So if you want to do right, you need to get out of that. Stop supporting that, because if you're not speaking out against it, you're on the fat of it. And you're holding up these fat people, you're crushing these poor people, and holding up these fat lot of majority in ignorance. That's a public body. And you either stand for truth, you're either against truth, or you're for truth. So you're either you're either of the leaving, or you're 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 standing with Christ. Right? You can't be both. You're either in Christ or doing good towards what is righteous of, of the law, lawfully, in the stead of the lawful righteousness, because the, the law is to serve all. 
to serve all men. And that's, that's, that's the law in Christ, to love your neighbour as yourself, to do all things for the least, to put the least, you know, everyone considered, the least to the top and the top to the least, because Christ is faithful and he's a rock and he's completed and, and testified of his truth and it's manifest in the word and in the law and in life and if you deny it you deny the fruits of this system you deny it in hospitals now I've experienced in hospitals this exactly the same state order state run liars of criminals criminal public mindset and soul liars anti-christ anti-good honest and they just keep lying supporting this Facebook and all this um, propaganda to support this fat Vatican lump of iniquity and, and all the powers that are invested in the corporate world behind that fatness who dominate. Because of that force, all, all the mammon, because that feeds off and rides off the back of mammon, because mammon gives it power. Mammon gives it association and wealth. And what holds the Pope up is the fatness that it, it holds up by allowing them to ignore it. If the world was honest about the lies of Roman Catholicism in Great Britain, the lies about Islam, that all these things were law unlawful just a few hundred years ago, they're suddenly not lawful. They're, they're suddenly lawful, lawful now. Why? Because the world, the nations died and we've got this lawless, fat people in power predominantly. And that's the state of our world. We've lost our law, we've lost our rights. And we've got these paedophile politicians, these paedophile sodomite religious bodies getting away with it with impunity. And then the whitewash, the complete whitewash of this continual flog of lies. Oh, don't worry, it's all gone away now. Then it won't happen again. Oh, oh, you know, the Blessed Mary would be ashamed. Well, Christ is ashamed. You should be ashamed of your own guilt and, and your, your cheek to keep lying to the world when, when all the, this stuff of my life has been monitored and then you act on it behind the screens because you're spying on people and you know that people know who you are and people like myself are persecuted from the birth because of this Catholic lie in body and they're quite happily on the public f uh, stage know that oh it's all well we're all sorry but in private they know and they're persecuting people like me and other Christians and other people who stand for the law threatening their families pressuring them stirring other people up against them to come out of the blue out of nowhere not knowing where the adversities come from so we've got this f state fact government fat government unlawful compromise they'd rather serve lawlessness than stand up for what's lawfully right the law common law not the blooming state leaving unjust law from vatican city criminals aiding and abetting the most atrocious perverts the catholic church why aren't they hanging these men perverts psychopaths their inheritance is psychopathic. They're generationally like this, liars, pedomites, sodomites, pedophiles and sodomites. They're terrorists. They do false flag attacks, murders. They allow these atrocities to go on and they play the holy, holy face of it. They're liars and they're criminals and they need stringing up. False witnesses. Hang them all, I think. They should be. They should be stopped. Stop protecting those you're in bed with. And this is to the lawful government, the so-called lawful government. If you don't speak out against these and deal with it, ban them from the lawfully deal with it lawfully, like it has been in the King James, like the law teaches. You don't let those criminals in your country. They will swear an oath against your country. Look at our country. It's unjust. Why? Because you're in bed with liars and criminals and the law, the, 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 unlaw, the unlawful, that which is lawless, Vatican City tip, that, that sewage. 
and they're criminal compromisers. So anyone in our government who isn't speaking out against Roman Catholicism and Islam is a criminal. It's a criminal, it's, it's always been a criminal. Here's the proof, look. The writing's on the wall. It's on a wall, it's on my wall, it's on hundreds of walls. And it's as plain as day in front of everybody on the TV on a daily basis. But, but the world doesn't believe, you see. The world doesn't accept Christ. But these people who know Christ, who know the truth, will not accept the truth. They will carry on compromised and lie, knowing that people like myself are dying, being persecuted, but they're quite happily to steal all the goodies and carry on lying and let the world carry on in ignorance because it's too frightened to act itself. Because they're frightened for themselves, so they won't speak out against the truth. So that's it. if that's you, you know, it's on your head. Your life is your responsibility. And God will judge every man, woman and child for every single word, thought and deed. And if they don't believe in Jesus, all their sins, are, they're going to be paying for them. And we live in this two-faced doublespeak, right? Black and white, you know, oh, it's all good, you know, and that's how you grow up. You might, you go, oh, mum, this world's making me sick. I don't worry, you'll grow, you'll grow up, you'll, you'll, you'll grow into it. You'll become like the world. You'll be set in the world's image. Just want to show you some quick divisions. Right, here's a diagram. This symbolises north, east, south and west. We've got north, east, south, west. We've got left, right. we got up, we got down. That is true. That's a balanced scale. That's true. That's a balance. That's truth. Right? Anywhere off, off these lines, it's only true in part because it's founded on lawlessness. So any good held up, oh, we're doing it, it Brexit, we need to go through all this. Right? If they're, if they're admitting the unlawfulness of it in the first place, it's founded on a lie. So part true and lies is false doesn't matter what side you swing on the swingometer whether you're left or right of it oh let's try this oh we we'll use let's try this idea the, the other half of the good on the other side of the fence it's still part true and false there's true roman catholicism is lying it's unlawful and it's unbiblical it's unchristian anyone who supports it's a liar and not a Christian and false. I've just read the scriptures, the word of God testifies of it. The fruits testify it because of this unjust world. So is our world true or is our world not true? Is our is our government just and lawful or is it not just and lawful? So that's my invitation for you to um, examine these things and examine statecraft and the participation in the, the government in these lawful, commercial, private lawless criminal corporate powers in bed with the powers of the lawless state of Vatican City Washington the, the lawless powers in Washington and the law, lawless powers in our own government are standing up for what's right so this is my appeal to the unjust judge to start putting things right start getting your house in order because there's people out in the world suffering and God, you must know, you must know on your conscience better than anyone what's going on in the world. So this is just my testimony that the Lord knows, and the Lord knows those who know. And the Lord knows how the wicked will carry on burying the righteous, cutting, cutting the head off despite its own face. So it'll bury the truth. When the truth tries to present itself, it'll bury it because it's too frightening for it to come out. So the Lord the Lord will just allow it to scream out and scream out and then he'll remove it. And then that which didn't ignore it, he's just going to burn it in one, one foul swoop. So bearing in mind, only Christ, only faith alone, in Christ alone, is true. Is a true just course because we are sinners don't matter where where we are in the scale 
we're either part good and error, part error and good. You know, it doesn't matter where you are, in, if you're in the politics, whether you're in the private body or the civil body, if you're a king or a government, if you're not in Christ, you're, you're out. Right, only that is true. And even that is true, but that's truly out of line with the truth. So that's got truth in it, it's just tipped. So only Christ knows what's the truth, because he is the truth, because he give us a he give us the light, he give us a plan, he give us the principles to measure true, he give us the law. So if you're not um going in line with your what you what this country swears to, lawfully swears to serve Christ the law, not 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 believing in a Christian body and be loyal to the Catholic or the Protestant, no, to be lawful to your conscience to be lawful to what's good and righteousness, who, who is Christ? He's the author and finisher of all righteousness, love, justice, equality, equity and fairness. You reject that, you're lawless and a liar and a law unto yourself. Like those people, like the EU and like our government, our, our statecraft, privatised government, look it up, they're in bed with all the unlawful people. And they, it's all rank and file, isn't it? That's um, that's leaven. That's not fair. It will give you the impression that it's fair. It all speaks fairness, but when you look at the fruit, everybody knows. Every doctor, every professional, every MP knows what the state is, what the state of the system is, because they're all raised in it. They're all compromised by it. The hospitals. That's my local hospital, Frimley Park. All statecraft. They cut out the family. And then you can't you can't get near them. You're not you're not on the package. You're not the right. You're not on the rank and file. You're just an afterthought. Your life's been met and managed before you get an input. And when you try and stand up lawfully, you have got this lawless flipping body cutting you out and then shutting you down in the public. Well, what have you got coming? So that's my invitation there. Look, to examine the truth, plain as day. Repent, receive Jesus Christ and be unleavened to be lawful and just, forgiven and make a difference in this world to help people under the yoke, under the yoke of this weight of this lawless, unjust lies. Because what's coming? You know, is it prosperity cuts or are they just going to, is there another lie hidden within that? They're going to try and get that, because that ain't going to go away, that beetle pinching. That fat beetle pinching. I can only pray for the individuals, like the the individual pope or the individual priest or the individual members that can be saved today, because they're not. That ain't gonna change. All that power, all that nature, all that evil in in man's heart is not gonna change overnight. That, those powers remain, just like our world powers remain. I'm hoping individuals will change. That's my prayer and receive Jesus Christ and then start living the lawfully. Start judging these people in our government. Start bringing them to account. Start lining them up, convicting them and getting this balance tip. And getting us separate from these lawless people. Have you liberal? Have you gambling? Have you full of vice? And then they point out and say, oh, you can't look after yourself. You need taxing. You need this and you need that. These people are the ones sponsoring the whole world causing this problem and they play it with both hands like hypocrites. State run liars. Creating the two facedness itself and playing both hands. Oh, you need to do this, you know, environmental tax. Well, they're the ones investing in all the people causing all the environmental problems. They're the ones causing all the privatisation problems and breaking the back of the NHS. And these are the people that were there getting into the NHS and when it was founded because they want to they wanna main control and they want law. They want to be the law givers. Whereas our law protects us lawfully that we can, we can be protected by the law. And it's our, it, it's our keeper. It's not, our, it's not to run us and rule our lives, it's, it's for us to govern our own lives by and then defend ourselves against lawlessness. 
and that's what our country's lost because it has rejected Christ and our Christian foundation and the heritage of our law and the world's law, Israel's law and that's why the world's against the Jews and Israel the bias of this lawless fat lump Vatican City, on your bike we want, I want and the world needs truth and God is jealous for people to believe him he, he knows the world's going to go wrong He's already written down the, the, the fate of the world. It, it, it's souls, it, it's people's souls need saving. And then there may be in, the, in a lifetime that would be realized. So that's my invitation and testimony of this lawless political crap all the time. All the lies that keep going on is this base, this is what it's all about. The leaven and the unleaven and all that leaven is from that fat lump and those are in bed with it not the individuals the overall status quo a yoke to that state Satan's seat will come from that relationship of lawlessness in Rome criminal public mindset of lawlessness, liars, anti-Christ. If you don't believe in Christ, you're a liar. You're anti-good, you're anti-truth. Because Christ is for all truth and for all people and for all hearts. So if, you're, if you've complied to this world's image, you're on the bus of the guilt. You're a puppet. Ahead of the, you know, the puppet, the puppet's ruining your, running your life. So this lawless, he's, a, he, the, the Catholic Church, he's a head of lawlessness and he's a false prophet of God. The head of the prophet is the mouthpiece of God, so he claims to be the prophet of God, but he's a prophet of lawlessness. He's false. And because he believes he's the head of God on earth, he believes he's the ruler of all the leaders of the earth. The head of world state, which is by one man, of God falsely, like Christ. He's instead of Christ. He, he he's robbing Christ's shoes. Antichrist, who is already the one man. Christ is already the saviour. Read Hebrews thirteen, chapter eight. It's the same today as he was forever. He's saved. He is the saviour, and he sets all men free. Not like this antichrist robber, who yokes the whole world to this state-run, wicked. One world system, one world figurehead with a black, fake, apostate antichrist system, state run by a blimmin' computer, state run by a load of idiots who can't who can't who can't say, look, you're wrong, I can act on myself. No, they have to do what their rank and file says. So they can't think, they cut they have to they, they can't use their initiative, so it all goes down the bottom, down a swanee, because they're liars. And the leaven. Beware of the leaven. Why? Because it'll run all over your body, it'll run all over you, run all over your life, and it'll lead you down to destruction. And that's where our world's going, folks. So if you're not saved, I invite you to call upon the Lord, to believe in the Lord, and be saved, and call upon the Father, believing in faith alone, in Christ alone, in what He's done for every man, woman, and child to set them free. And to put that law in their hearts, in a personal relationship, it can set them free from the yokes of these lying people that they can then stand up against it. Get out of the, get out of the weight from underneath being walked over by liars. Because everyone who serves the world, whether they're in the uh, hospital, whether they're in lawyers, whether they're in the police, whether they're in... If they're not speaking out against that, the Pope, the lies about religion and the lies about the European Union and their involvement in it and their support of Islam and that, uh, advise, that he advises all the world's powers on religion and things and they listen to this fat idiot believing he's the head of Christ, he's not the believer has the, has the word of God and the law and the holy scriptures preserved in the King James to guard against this lawlessness and corruption and lies. But that's what it is, lies. Fat lies. False antichrist, whore, mother of harlots, in bed with all state religion, 
All state-run religions in bed with a harlot, mother of all harlots. They're all slags with this whore, pimping on the street, this false, lawless system of governance. When, when the true governance has already been being with us on a daily basis. But you, you, if you're of the world, you've rejected that. So you're going to get what you've asked for. You're going to get that lawless lump, destruction, world dominance, the Antichrist, and you're going to be like yoked to a computer, and your life's going to be governed with it, governed by it, and you're you're you, you'd have had your day. Today's your day. So if that's you, believe today and don't be caught in Babylon's trap tomorrow. And I'm going to close there with all sincerity to anyone listening, whether you're Jew, Gentile, believer, unbeliever, enemy. Murderer, sinner, anybody, anybody that uh, who, who needs uh, saving, I pray that this uh, message reaches them. Anyone in government, that, that this will help them, empower them, or warn them and convict them. And I'm, I'm going to share this testimony in the name of Jesus Christ, hoping that it will reach anyone that needs it. And I'm going to close in His sacred, holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.